show would like to welcome those of you watching the Colorado Texas Tech game Ron Franklin along with Ed Cunningham and Jack Aroot and we are scoreless because we are about to have the opening kickoff Texas did win the toss and they deferred to the second half absolutely magnificent day in the state capitol hard to find a cloud anywhere which was not the case when we had the K-State game in uh, telecast here three weeks ago. That was extremely difficult uh, toward the uh, second half of the ball game. And of course, 21 points in that game against Kansas State came on returns, punt, kickoff, and interception return. Hard to believe because, of course, the Oklahoma game played in Dallas. This is the first home game since that Kansas State loss. So the Texas fans looking forward to a better performance than what they saw last time the Longhorns were at home. And it's a day that uh, Mac Brown also it could be special for him looking for his 100th victory if he were to defeat Nebraska here today. And he's headed towards uh, Coach Royal of course Daryl Royal who the stadium is named after at 167 in Texas with 10 wins per season in the last six years he's <laughs> he's going to be continue to creep up that uh, towards the legendary Coach Royal. Coach Royal is at practice virtually every day. They are extremely close. One of the first things that Mac Brown did when he came to the University of Texas, uh, he certainly embraced the uh, Hall of Fame coach and uh, wanted his input on everything he did. Connecticut with a kick, and it's a line drive, and it's going to be taken uh, two yards deep in the end zone. Spins off the tackle, fumbles the football, and I believe it came right back up to the return man, Cosby. Now let's take a look at the Nebraska starting offense presented by Best Buy. Here is Terrence Nunn. Thanks, Ron. At quarterback, we have the real McCoy. Everybody knows he's a great passer, but now he's starting to run the ball. At running back, Jamal Charles, probably the fastest guy in college football. Up front, we have T. Hills, the real deal. Big, athletic, strong guy, hard to get around. All right, Derek Johnson, thanks very much for getting us off on the right foot there. Texas having received, and they throw to Shipley on first down. Nate Jones, and he'll go for the first down. Now let's take a look at the defensive starters for the Cornhuskers. Leading the black shirt defense up front, we got the immovable force, Nada Khan Su. And Ron, you better pronounce his name right every time or he's going to be coming after you. Behind, behind them, we got the linebackers, seniors, Corey McEwen and Steve Octavian. And in the secondary, we got Courtney Grigsby, our lockdown corner. He's one of the quickest guys on the team. He's got a 42 inch vertical leap. Straight ahead with this handoff, it'll go for almost five yards. We will work really hard and make it. <laughs> oh my. Sue. Anyway, uh, uh, McKeon makes the tackle on uh, Jamal Charles. And the one thing that uh, Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator, has been working so hard with with this defensive front is their their gap control. They they they're a young defensive line, inexperienced, and they tend to get stretched out and give up their gaps too easily. That's really what they've been fighting all year and giving up a bunch of yardage. Colt McCoy throws it incomplete in and out of the hands of the receiver, and uh, a lot of would-be officials in the seats right there nearby thinking it was pass interference. Uh, the X Factor. Take a look at the City X Factor in today's ball game for Nebraska. We talked about it from the start. And we'll talk about it the whole time. They really have nothing to lose. They should just play all out, really carefree. Don't worry about mistakes. Go forward. And for Texas, I think that they need to max protect if necessary. The one thing that we've seen teams be able to do is get to Colt McCoy. And you mentioned at the top of the show that they simplified some things, but don't let your quarterback get knocked around in this game. I think that might be the only way Nebraska can win. Blitz. Pass is caught right over the middle. Nate Jones makes the reception, but he is well short of the first down. And 
for the Nebraska faithful who are here a standing ovation for the defense coming into the ball game they were blitzing only 19 percent of the time well I think it looks as though they were 38 percent this time last year we're going to see closer to the 38 percent or even more Ed. and that's exactly what Greg Davis the offensive coordinator said yesterday that because Nebraska has nothing to lose you can kind of throw out the statistics of 19 percent blitz and they were expecting to see 40 maybe even 50 in this ball game. Spiral into the wind. Fair catch is called for and made at the five yard line. Justin Moore with a dandy. 47 yards on the boot into the wind. And now let's take a look at the Nebraska starting offense presented by Best Buy. And here is Terrence Nunn. Thanks, Ron. We're led by our starting quarterback, Sam Keller, also known as a gunslinger. And he's handing off to our all purpose back, Marvin Lucky. And going outside, with, also with me, is our wide receiver, Nate Swift, trying to steal all my catches. Going up front is the big guys that protect our gunslinger with Carl Nix, biggest guy on the team, but got the quickest feet. Well, a difficult starting position for the Cornhuskers from their own five yard line. Marlon Lucky, the tailback, and he'll get the handoff on first down. Breaks it open, has five, and then close to 10 yards on the first play from scrimmage, tackled by Marcus Griffin. Martin Lucky, a guy who hasn't gotten a lot of chatter this year because of all the things going on off the field, but Lucky has turned himself into a very diverse back. He's a great receiver out of the backfield, and uh, early on they're going with an inside zone play, and he shows his acceleration. Quick count, they give it to Lucky again, has the first down, and he will be stopped after a gain of three. Now let's take a look at the Texas defensive starters. Here once again is Derek Johnson. Derek. Thanks, Ron. Up front for the defense, we have big Frank Ocam. You're going to have to put two guys to cover him down. Going to the linebackers, Rashad Bobino is right in the middle. Going to the DBs at safety, Marcus Griffin. Not as loud as his brother, but he makes a lot of noise on the field. <laughs> okay, Derek, thanks very much. Derek in attendance, obviously, at the ball game today as that running play will be stopped at the 24, and the Huskers will be looking at a third down at about six. Marlon Lucky on the carry, and Lamar Houston making the stop. And let's go down to the sideline, Jack Aroot. Ron, some of the things that are changed on the offense for Nebraska is Sean Watson, their offensive coordinator, has come down from the tower. He's down on the sidelines. I asked him what it's allowed him to do. He said, most importantly, I can look my players in the eye and make adjustments. Big opening and a first down on the carry by Lucky as he goes sprinting off the left side and Brandon Foster had to come up from his cornerback position to make the tackle. Now we talked about this when we did Nebraska at Missouri. That is why they don't run this young man 35 times a game. And all they're doing is zone blocking and then he's just looking for the cutback underneath of it. And that's re listen when you zone block like that all you have to do is cover people up. Let a guy like Lucky, who has shown really good vision, find the hole, and he will. Roy Halu, a freshman, breaks it over, left the tackle, and out across the 40. That is a gain of about seven yards on the play, and right now, they are gashing the defense of the Texas Longhorns. Well, and, and if you've watched Nebraska this year, you've gotten used to Sam Keller. That's Dwayne Aquina, the co-defensive coordinator for Texas, trying to go head-to-head -head with this offense right now and you're not seeing Sam Keller who has thrown for a ton of yards he has the all time single game record of 438 against Ball State and now because of his own blocking is working they're going to go right back to it. Halo hit behind the line of scrimmage he will fight his way for one yard and now let's go to Matt Weiner in our New York studio Matt. Back in New York I'm Matt Weiner keeping you current on everything happening across the country. is not going to pick it up as defensively Glenn came into the line and he was hit immediately by a mass of humanity and it is going to be fourth down at about a half yard. 
And it looks as though that uh, Bill Callahan says, nope, I'm, I'm not going to drink the Kool-Aid here. I don't want to take a chance. And that time they used a guard pull around the backside instead of just straight ahead roll off zone block. And they had so much success. Then they take the time to pull someone. And it was the penetration that killed the play by Texas. Cosby is the deep man. Titchener the kicker. Got a little breeze to his back. And this is a beauty. High spiral turning over and a diving catch at the 11-yard line. So let's take a timeout. 9.44 left in this opening quarter following that 45-yard kick. No score. So Mac Brown looks at a similar situation. They got it a little bit better than what uh, Nebraska had just a moment ago, but they have put Derek Lucky into the ball game as the blocking fullback. And that carry straight up the middle will be very close to six yards in the play as he'll say he is down at around the 17 yard line. Tackled by Brandenburg. Lance, a senior out of Overland Park, Kansas. It was interesting talking to Mac Brown yesterday in his office about this Nebraska team, and he said, You know, I'd almost rather be playing up there. I think this is a good distraction for the Nebraska players to be able to get on the road and get out of that heat. And of course he's not talking about the temperature. <laughs> no. And let's go down to Jack Root again. Ron you and Ed were talking up at the top of the show about the way that uh, Greg Davis tried to simplify this offense. It wasn't as a detriment to Colt McCoy. It wasn't because he wasn't doing things right. He really wanted to get everybody on the same page. He wanted to simplify the schemes for this offensive line that are playing their way into contention. He said now we just let try to do something really good rather than a lot of things mediocre. Vondrell McGee, a redshirt freshman out of Longview, comes in a tailback for the Longhorns. He wears number two. Gets the handoff, breaks it open, has five, has ten. And boy, count this one off as about an 18-yard gain as he breaks out to the 40-yard line. 18 on the play, and Eisenhardt had to come over and make the tackle. Well, both of these teams early on getting a lot out of little inside zone runs. Again, just watch the offensive line. They're just stepping to their left and allowing McGee to find his hole. And you get the sense why this young man has found his way onto the field. He's really explosive. Let me tell you something. Loki has made a difference. The big defensive tackle operating at fullback. He is clearing out people all over the place. And one of the reasons that they have some gigantic holes to run through. If you wonder why you see a 90 series number in the ball game, well, that's Derek Loki, who was a four-point student headed to, uh, to law school once he finishes his undergraduate work. Two plays ago, look at this block. Well, it just walls him off there. Well, but he's been flattening yeah. people since he came into the ball game. And, and I wonder if Dwayne Aquina and Larry McDuff, the co-defensive coordinators, are brought in on the decision of how much Loki's going to play early. Because <laughs> let's not forget he's a starting defensive tackle. They don't want him to get too worn out. Well, Tiemann is in the ball game at fullback now, but he throws a good block. But nice pursuit on the part of Eisenhardt on Vondrell McGee, and it'll go for a short game. And now here we are at third and medium, which you would think is a throwing down going back to what Jack was just talking about simplifying the scheme a lot of this had to do simplifying the scheme with the offensive line remember you lost three guys in the middle of that offensive line to the NFL and uh, this offensive line trying to figure it out right now let's see if Nebraska does bring pressure and if Texas is able to protect McCoy which they weren't able to do early in middle part of the season so it's third down the line to make is midfield Nebraska shows blitz and here they come and it's the hot route throwing a middle screen and the ball was dropped by Nate Jones. Well I like the aggressive call by Kevin Cosgrove you mentioned coming into this game that Nebraska had only been blitzing 19 percent of the time and Greg Davis and the offensive staff at Texas expected a lot more and that's exactly what they're getting so hats off to Nebraska coming in and going all out they've really got nothing to lose so why not give it a shot. Justin Moore had a 47 yard punt his uh, first time out. the side of his foot it came across this one and knocks it out of bounds and uh, let's see where the officials they move up the sideline right now and they're going to say out of bounds at around the 28 yard line of Nebraska so we'll take a timeout 657 
left in his opening quarter. That's only a 28-yard punt. Part of the uh, band from Nebraska that travel down here. They always uh, do that, but from long distances, too expensive to bring the entire unit. But they have a pep band here so that uh, the fellows on the field realize their presence and get to hear the songs that they are accustomed to listening to. Marlon Lucky again lines up a tailback, and this time it's Andy Sam, number 48 at fullback, blocking for him. And a gain of about five. Let's go back to Jack. All right, fellas, I've already seen the improvement on the offensive line for Nebraska as a result of having Sean Watson down on the sideline. First thing that he did with his charges when they came off the field, he got them together and he told them how well the interior line was blocking. Then he challenged them to come off the block just a little bit quicker. And it led me to believe Ed Cunningham that they're going to continue to try and run this thing. Yeah, and Sean Watson felt like when we talked to him on Wednesday that they were going to be able to run it. I Just keep dialing up that inside zone until Texas stops it. Nothing there this time. It always happens, Jack. We brag on somebody <laughs> or some, a group of somebody. And, uh, it's the kiss of death. <laughs> the kiss of death. <laughs> right now, Nebraska hopes that you don't say anything more about those guys. Near the conclusion of today's game, we will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Well, now you're in your first must throw down in distance and uh, with two tight ends kind of unusual and Nebraska not a spread offense so this you'll see this even on third and ten well we had movement on the offensive side of the ball the positioning for Nebraska right now the student section full start 44 of the offense five yard penalty second down and the kids right there make a lot of noise and they are on that hash mark very close to them so somebody got anxious on the snap count and five yards will be stepped off. Mike well, there's McNeil. one there's one thing that uh, Nebraska has also done we're talking about right up right up top you're going to see absolutely the the flinch but the one thing Nebraska has also done is tried to simplify this is a team that shifts and moves as much as any team in the country and they've they've dialed that back some as well. Back to throw. Pressure, dumps it off. Oh, what a hit at the 30-yard line as Andy Sand caught the football, and then he got racked up by Arakpo, I believe. Brian Arakpo did not see him in the K-State game. He was injured in the very first game of the year. Second quarter against Arkansas State, he got an illegal chop block and hurt his knee, and this is a guy who brings the entire Longhorn defense up. He is a spectacular talent, and even though he's not quite 100%, the coaches talk about how the entire defense rallies around his playmaking ability. So Nebraska to punt. This time from their own 15 yard line stands the punter. And it's a very good coverage kick again. Very high and long. And a fair catch made at the 19 yard line by Cosby. So let's take a timeout at 5.09 left in his opening quarter when we come back. Colt McCoy, an opportunity to get his offense going. Can he do it? Jamal Charles checks into the ball game at tailback. He wears number 25 for the Longhorns. McCoy over the middle, complete. Jordan Shipman, Con Cosby. Breaks it open across the 45, and he's out to midfield. It's going to be a 30-yard gain, and Tier Green makes the tackle. First time that Texas has spread them out. No fullback in the ball game, and that made a difference. And good protection by the offensive line. No blitz that time. We saw a bunch of blitzes in the first couple of series by Nebraska. That time they decided to play coverage, and that's the one thing. If, if Colt McCoy has time, he has struggled against pressure this year, but if he has time, he will find people against the zone. It's the longest catch by Cosby this season. Pass complete. 
at the 38-yard line. And this time it's Nate Jones. And give some credit to Colt McCoy as he is moving and has to throw the ball the opposite direction across his body. You know, I want to go back to what Jack reported from the field about how they've simplified this offense. They've basically given Colt McCoy less to change the play to. They used to be able, he used to be able to change it to anything in the playbook when he went to Audible. Now they give him one choice against the coverage that he sees. And it seems to me in the last few ball games, and even in that Oklahoma game, he's just playing more free. He's not in his head as much as he was, we saw him in that Kansas State game. about seven now eight yards they'll tackle him at the 30 and it's Octavian who was there to make the stop that was an audible dig and that's the one thing I think of, uh, of Colt McCoy's game that you overlook because you were so used to the guy before him Vince Young and you think well there's nobody who's going to be able to run like Vince so we don't have to worry about that but this is a play that they've been able to leave in with McCoy because he runs better than you suspect you expect him to be just a pocket passer but he can tuck it and run. Jamal Charles is the tailback, but he is out to the right side, lined up as a wide receiver. Pressure coming. Thrown complete 25 yard line, and it's going to be a first down for Texas. Jack Aroot. Ron, how correct is Ed Cunningham, our partner? Well, consider this stat, guys. In the last two games, Colt McCoy has outrushed his tailback, Jamal Charles. McCoy has 116 yards if you take away the sacks, 94 if you add them in. Jamal Charles carried the rock for 23 times in just 100 yards. All right, Jack. You know, I. I'm not sure with the concussion problems that he has had that that is an instant formula for success so in and out of the hands of Cosby it looked as though he was going to have to grab it with only one hand but I like the throw from McCoy you see a lot of times when a quarterback will try to lead his receiver well Cosby was covered so he threw it back short into the inside to allow his receiver to come in and Cosby had to fight through the defensive back to get to it so couldn't quite get there but I like the throw how many times do you see a quarterback try to lead the guy perfectly and he's covered and, and you just either have a, a guy run into him or a, a broken up pass that was a good choice by the quarterback Nebraska showing blitz and here they come Texas rolls the pocket throws it complete that's Nate Jones and he will step out of bounds at the 21. Well, it's so nice to see Nate Jones as a senior have such a big year. He's a guy who battled some hamstring injuries, was in and out of the training room, spent a lot of time in the weight room, and actually had gained too much weight. He got himself over 200 pounds because he was spending so much time rehabilitating himself, and it's nice to see him as a senior come out and have such a big year. It is third down. They needed to take it to the 15-yard line of Nebraska. No score. 3-12 left to play in his opening quarter. Quick, too high at the 15-yard line, Quan Cosby, and that's the worst pass that we have seen Colt throw today. Well, I, I, kind of fly on it. Yeah, I like the call because they expected pressure so you throw the quick slant, and McCoy, it looked like he just never got a hold of that ball. And when he went to throw the slant, the ball was not set in his hand. And you're exactly right that that's the first missed throw uh, on the day. Ryan Bailey comes in to attempt a field goal. It is going to be a 38 yards. The significance with this young man, he didn't know until the last moment last year that he was even going to make the trip to Lincoln. And he wound up kicking the game-winning field goal just like that one right there. The one last year was 22 yards. This one from 38. And Texas takes the lead three to nothing. So we'll take a timeout. 305 left opening quarter. Longhorns on top. Hunter Lawrence prepares to kick it off into a slight breeze from the north. Very high, and it's going to be very returnable. Being held up a little bit at the seven-yard line is Grixby. 20, 25, 30. Finally knocked out of bounds at around the 40 yard line. And let's go back to the story on Ryan Bailey. Because he did not know until the last minute he was going to be taken on the trip to Lincoln, his parents didn't go to the ball game. Well, his mom was in New York on a girl trip. They went into a bar where there were 400 Texas exes viewing the game. And all of a sudden, she almost fell over, Cindy did, when she looked up and saw her son running on the field. 
kicked the winning field goal and she's jumping up and down saying that's my kid and everybody is thinking is this lady out of her mind <laughs> why aren't you there for the ball game your son if he is your son which of course he is she probably didn't want to say much before the kick in case he missed it <laughs> then missed she could it. slink out exactly the back right. and not catch too much heat <laughs> In fact, here is a flashback to that ball game late in the uh, fourth quarter. Texas driving for a potential game-winning field goal. Caught by the Longhorns, fumbled. Casey stuttered, recovered it, and here's the kick. You see number 39, Ryan Bailey steps on, kicks it from 22 yards out, and the Longhorns won it, 22 to 20. Lucky on the tote this time it'll take it for one for the 42 yard line well, now nebraska finding itself not having as much success running the ball on first and second down they may have to start opening it up a bit it seems that texas who's starting to develop some of that depth on the defensive line texas is famous for starting to shut that down and now you're leaving all these big bodies in and texas grouped up but look at some of this one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Third down. They need to take it to the 47-yard line. Short drop. Keller over the middle and has it complete to Terrence Nunn. And Terrence is going to take it inside the Texas 40 to the 38-yard line. That's good for 20 yards in the pass play. And a nice job by Keller to pick him up at the very last instance. Well, you hear all defensive coaches when they're getting ready to play Nebraska talking about Sam Keller as a streaky passer. If he gets into a rhythm, he's very accurate. That throw there was right on time, right on the money. And the way you get him out of his rhythm is try to start bringing some pressure. Halu gets to carry, and the freshman knocked down hard at the line of scrimmage. He'll have nothing, and it'll be second down and 10. Well, we'll take a look at the last year, year and a half, where Sam Keller has been very interesting. Of course, he was at Arizona State back in 2005, was their starter until he had a wrist injury. Rudy Carpenter came in, played very well, but then Dirk Cutter named him the starter on August 18th and it decided because of some players coming in and saying they wanted Rudy Carpenter to play to put Carpenter in and Sam decided to transfer to Nebraska and sit out last year. Straight ahead with this running play to around the 34 yard line and it's uh, Norton who makes the tackle. Jack Aroop. Ron I had a chance to cover Sam Keller when he was playing at Arizona State and Bill Callahan brought up the point that when Sam Keller came in Nebraska the biggest challenge for this coaching staff was to take a little of the gunslinger out of Sam Keller because he always just would run and gun and just do whatever it took to win. He said now he's got a quarterback that's a little more focused. He's got a quarterback that's a little calmer. A quarterback that knows he needs to use all the tools in his arsenal. And he'll need him here today. Third down. They need to take it to the 28-yard line. Blitz coming off the corner. They throw the other direction. It is complete. Now, where are they going to mark him down? Looks as though he is going to be marked down short of the first down. And I think Purify had the catch. And I think you go for it. I, I think you're in that distance. You're on the road. We talked right at the top of the show. The X factor. Play loose. Play free. Go for everything. I think this is a no-brainer for Nebraska to go for it. And Nebraska has called a timeout to discuss it. Well, he caught it right at the sticks, and I wonder if he's Purify moving backwards. Purify also has to be careful because the rule says if there is a collision and it creates space, it is pass Push interference. Off, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, he definitely stuck his arms out, didn't he? But Purify should have taken one more step. That's that's a get to the sticks and come back route. And he needs to take just one more step beyond so that when he comes back to the ball, the ball was thrown correctly by Keller. But Purify just needs to take one more step. Now, I would not get fancy. Don't pull anybody. Go straight ahead. You got a fullback in the game. It's an isolation play. Don't let penetration stop this fourth down. Cody Glenn. Is the eye back? They fake it to him. Want to throw, and the ball is caught for the first down inside the 20 to the 19. Is Andy Sand the fullback? That's 10 yards on the third down and one play, or fourth down and one, I should say. Well, you can see Texas all committed to the run, and you're going to get out to the flat, and they had this covered. They really did. Excuse me, that was the fullback that came out into the flat. 
And you can see that piece of paper fly up in the air. That was Dwayne Aquino, yeah. the defensive <laughs> coordinator, saying, guys, we've got it covered. Run under that ball and knock it down. So that is the end of the opening quarter. With our score, Texas three and Nebraska nothing but threatening. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. All righty, one of the uh, really good series as far as rivalries uh, in the country. Situation here, first down Nebraska, eighth play of the drive for them. Castile, the running back. I don't know if he was waiting for a block or what, but he slowed down, and the second he did, pursuit was all over him. And he only gained about four on the play. It looked as though he was going to have a lot more than that. Sure felt like it. Boy, there was a lot of push on the right side of that offensive line. And for Nebraska right now, relying heavily on the running game. And this comes right back to our conversations with Sean Watson and Bill Callahan on Wednesday. They felt like they could get the running game going against Texas. Adewego made that last tackle straight ahead. Tackle is missed as they were coming with the blitz. And it was Roy Miller, big number 99, who is a senior out of Colleen, made the tackle for the Texas Longhorns. Exact same play out of a little different formation that time where the backside guard pulls. And now you're in that third and four territory. I, the way they've been running it, that last throw was almost picked by Kendall. I think they may run it again. So third down, the nine-yard line is where they need to take it to. And to throw a fade route into the end zone, caught out of bounds. That is Swift, who did an outstanding job of going up high for the football. Well, no decision time here. I think you kicked this one. I thought it was the right decision at the end of the first quarter to go for it on fourth down. But now you got to get out there and send Alex Henry in to try to get the points. It's going to be a 31 yard attempt. Alex Henry, ball is down and he got it. And we are tied at three apiece at the 1341 mark of the second quarter. So let's take a timeout. Texas three and Nebraska three. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. The Nebraska cheerleaders on hand, and you can see nothing but beautiful, clear blue skies behind them. Weathercast for today, a high of 77, and it's not supposed to, I mean, I guess it was a 77, and then it's supposed to start dropping from there and uh, cool off to a very comfortable situation with low humidity. Kanonik prepares to kick this one off into the win. His uh, kick is being held up a bit. It's going to be short. Take it on the run at the 16-yard line. Out of the 30 and then close to the 35. And now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question, Tom Osborne led Nebraska to 25 straight bowl games. Where was his first bowl appearance, and who did the Cornhuskers play? Well, that's an easy one. You know why? Because I can just look it up in their media guide. But I'm not going to cheat. It, you notice there's no conversation I with am. Jack right now. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Jack always has his backpack handy to cheat on these questions. So first bowl appearance and first win for Tom Osborne. Crystal Benaya comes into the ball game at tailback for the Longhorns. Nebraska did not have timeout. their personnel right, Nebraska. so they needed to take a timeout. Time out of the half. Well, of course, Steve Peterson was let go as the athletic director, and they brought in Tom Osborne as the interim athletic director. And what an unbelievable run at 
when you think about the end part of his career 94 95 97 winning those national championships and a lot of people he had had such a great career up to that point thinking is he ever going to win one and I would argue that those 94 95 teams may have been the best ever in college football you always kind of have those arguments but boy Tommy Frazier at quarterback some of the great guys they had on defense those were awfully dominant teams. Well, the Coach Osborne is here, sitting up in the athletic director's box, had an opportunity to shake hands with him when he came in. This is the best starting field position for Texas today, as they scrimmage from their own 35-yard line. McCoy with the audible, throws back the other direction, and just a little bit overthrown at the 40 yard line and Quan Cosby the intended receiver and Murillo did a nice job of going up and contesting him on the play. Well and coach Osborne has said that no decisions will be made until the end of the season on what happens with coach Callahan and his staff but you're already starting to see the shakeout some of the recruits that coach Callahan had landed and gotten verbal commitments starting to back out because of the uncertainty in the program and so to me it becomes a timing issue. I, I think decisions need to be made sooner rather than later for recruiting. Second down to 10 Jamal Charles on the draw play and he's going to have about seven maybe eight yards on the play. And let's go down the sideline again. Here's Jack. Well Ron it wasn't the first question asked of Tom Osborne when he was announced to the interim AD but it was one of the early ones and his answer well it's like reading tea leaves. As you said EC he said that he would uh, leave Bill Callahan in charge of the football staff and that he did also say that he doesn't believe in leaving people dangling. So I'll let you know what my assessment is and I'll talk to the team and the football staff sometime soon and lay things out. Not the glowingest of uh, assessments and endorsements, was it? No, I don't think so. Uh, Colt McCoy is going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. He will not have the first down as Brandenburg does a nice job defensively in making the tackle. So it's going to be fourth down and Texas is able to do nothing with that really good field position. I, you know, for the good of Nebraska, and I have a feeling Coach Osborne will do just this, they've got to act and act immediately when the season is over. I mean, the minute the season is over. Otherwise, they're going to lose an entire recruiting year, and that is devastating. And depending on when that is, if, if Nebraska wins two games, you could be in a bowl situation. Then it becomes a question, do you make the change before the bowl or, or make your decision before the bowl? And I agree with you. I think you should because of that exact reason. It's too late in bowl season to be making those decisions. Well, the uh, punt is going to go out of bounds at around the seven yard line. And we ask uh, Coach uh, Callahan about dealing with adversity. The best thing I can describe this is adversity. We haven't been through these types of conditions in the history of Nebraska football. So this is all new to us. It's all new to our team. It's all new to the university, the fans. So the best way I can describe it is adversity that you have to fight yourself out of. And it, we're in a hole and we're digging ourselves out. Running play will go for nothing. In fact, he may have lost a yard on the play. Roy Miller again coming up to make the stop. A lot of times uh, Miller uh, is always playing behind Derek Loki, but uh, today they are both in the ball game at times, which makes for two really big, powerful guys to have to block on the inside. And they put Loki out actually at defensive end some during this game because Nebraska brings all of those big bodies in the H backs the tight ends the fullback so you will see Loki sometimes lined up as a defensive end. Second down and 12. Their third and final timeout of the half. So we'll uh, take a timeout. 11 14 left in the first half. Texas three and the Cornhuskers three. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Second down and 12 for the Cornhuskers as they scrimmage from their own five yard line. 
who tied at three. Keller, quick pass over the middle, and that'll be a short gainer to around the 12-yard line. Jack Aroot. There does not seem to be any sort of intimidation going on down here with the Nebraska offense. In fact, what I've noticed is they continue to be equally coached up by their coordinator, Sean Watson, and by Bill Callahan. They keep telling the team how well they're doing. I think one thing you'd better look for, guys, maybe during the next couple of series, I think you'll see the fullback, Thomas Lawson, in a lot more in some of these uh, personnel blockings because they seem to want to get something to him. We'll have to wait and see. Jack, right now, they've got a big third down to recruit because if they have to punt, they're punting into the wind. Pass is caught, and they're going to have the first down. Sean Hill, one of the H-backs, made the reception and barely got it, but that's that's all he needed to take it to get the first down and move the sticks. And Sam Keller now six for seven on the day. And watch how quickly Keller is going to find his tight end, just hook it up right there. Watch how quickly he gets this ball out. It's right there when Hill turns around. Keller's right on time with those three and five step drops. Lucky breaks off one tackle, goes across the 20 to the 21. Looks like Lucky may have. Yeah, he's hobbling off that. Up. And I'll tell you, if you're a Longhorn fan, a little bit of a surprise on this one. Aaron Lewis is in the ball game, injured in the Oklahoma game and a lot of people thought he would not return this season number 95 the defensive end for the Longhorns reverse it out oh what a hit on Nate Swift in the open field that is a really good job by Adewego Ishii Adewego a redshirt freshman out of Denton Texas let's take a listen to this shot that was excellent read by Otawago. The play went away from him. He was playing the backside safety. And as soon as Swift got it, he was right there. Excellent recognition. And Nebraska continues to find itself in these third and medium to almost third and longs. And it seems like they didn't want to throw every time. Swing pass. This is Haler at the 20, at the 25, has the first down. Marcus Griffin on the stop, but it's a gain of 10 yards. Well, Halo, a freshman. And how often do you hear coaches talk about freshmen not being very good in the passing game? But that's exactly why Halo's in the game is because he is so good in the passing game, not just as a receiver, but also in pass protection. So we see Castile, a freshman. And of course, with Marlon Lucky on the sideline, we're going to see more of these two guys with Castile and Halo. And let's go down to Jack Aroot. Well, I think you'll see Lucky coming back shortly, guys. They checked his left ankle. He's tweaked it a little bit. What they're going to do is they're going to retape the outside of the shoe. One of the rules, you know, you can't do spats anymore, so they had to find the black tape. Marlon Lucky says it's a little sore, but he's expected to return. Lawson in the ball game at uh, fullback, and Castile has checked in at tailback. A little bit, I beg your pardon. Now Sam comes in replacing Lawson. Give it to Castile and nothing doing. And let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Ron, here's our nominee for the Pontiac game changing performance. Late in Louisville, Pittsburgh was poised to tie it, but LaShawn McCoy couldn't squeeze the handoff. Rod Council hopped on it, squeezed it, put the Cardinals back over 500 on the season. Watch the season's best Pontiac game changing performances at ESPN.com. Okay, thanks very much. There are those who would say that they went over 500 last week, but had to take it away on a touchdown that should not have been. Alu stays in the ball game at tailback number 10. Ninth play of the drive, and they throw it out in the flat to him. Incomplete pass picked up by Texas, but that is a forward pass as Arakpo is the man who was applying the pressure. And Arakpo did an excellent job of reading this. Jumping up and tipping this ball. What a dynamic player. Just enough yeah. to knock it off its course. And Arakpo, you see why the coach is so excited to have him back. Very, very athletic. And in fact, one scout told me that there's a guy that played in North Carolina, played a long time with the Giants, that he has the same abilities as. That's saying 
A mouthful. Titchener with a punt. This is a good kick into the wind. Fair catch is called for as a flag comes down. Actually, if he did call for the fair catch, what I thought he did, that's a delay of game. And you've got a flag over on the other side of the field from the three flags you see in your screen at about the 45 yard line, which I believe would be in the neighborhood of some type of hold or block in the back. That's way over in front of the Texas bench, and the play was over on the far hash. So there's laundry literally from one end of the field to the other. Cosby got up holding his face mask like that should be one of the calls. He, well, we're told now by the truck that he did not call for the fair catch. So then one of the two flags on the far sideline could be face mask, but the one here on the near side next to the Texas bench. Nope, he did not. Yeah, there's the mm -hmm. face mask there. That was Ricky Turnars. Getting a little restless, wanting to know what's going on. There are two fouls on the play. Holding on the offense, that penalty is declined. Face mask on the return team. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, the face mask not on the return team, had to be on the coverage. I, I, I team, started so. to say it has to be on the coverage. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they would can turn that one down. <laughs> we'll take a break. We're tied at three with seven and a half minutes left in his opening half. I really had not wanted a corn dog until now. <laughs> They look healthy. I mean, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> Although they are, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the discussion has continued. Even during the timeout, Mac Brown is uh, all the way out <laughs> halfway to the uh, to the hash mark, talking with uh, the field judge. Face mask, Nebraska. Those penalties that, offset. Okay. Well, we play fourth down. That, that makes sense. You know, they called yeah. the holding on Nebraska, and I thought, okay, you, you can hold. Uh, you know. If you're the kicking team, you can't obviously hold, but it felt to me like Greg Burks, the referee, maybe had gotten a little confused at which way the, yeah. the penalties had gone, and so we do end up with an offset situation. And luckily for Nebraska, because that was going to be great field position for Texas. So fourth down and seven now, and uh, Titchener will do it all over again. And Cosby looking up into a very high sky, very bright. Low driving kick. Cosby fair catch is made at the 25-yard line. So it's a 41-yard kick. Earlier we asked the Affleck trivia question. Tom Osborne led Nebraska to 25 straight bowl games. Where was the first bowl appearance and who did the Huskers play? And here is the answer. I, I didn't cheat. So uh, I, I'll just guess Texas Blue Bonnet Bowl. I, 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 oh, gee, Ed. The Cotton Bowl. How about the Cotton Bowl? <laughs> yeah. 19 to 3. 74. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to be at least Texas. We, that's why we would ask the question. Well, Jamal Charles almost broke that thing after being attempted to, to be tackled, and a late flag comes in, and now a couple of flags. And you can see Nebraska signaling that it's going to be against the Longhorns. After the play, personal foul, 79 of the offense. 15 yard penalty, second down. That's Tony Hills. Most unlucky. 
unlike him. Yes. Well, I mean, they were tangled up, and he threw his hands up to, to block him. Yeah, may, may have thrown the elbow was why they called it. Yeah. So the 15 yards stepped off. Tony, when he came out of high school, one of the most highly acclaimed tight ends in the country. Had a knee problem. They thought he may never play again. Now he's going to make a lot more money on Sundays playing at tackle. McCoy goes down. He is sacked, and a flag comes in. Zach Potter is the man who got him number 98. Well, Texas has just not gotten into any rhythm at all offensively other than the one drive that resulted in the three points. Face mask, number 98 of defense. That's a five yard penalty, second down. Well, and Texas catches a break as they call Zach Potter for the five yard incidental face mask. He did. But my point was going to be without with Texas not really getting into any rhythm. Everyone has talked about Nebraska's struggles on defense right now. They're allowing these guys to hang in there. They haven't established much of a running game at all. And Nebraska still look like they're playing with a lot of enthusiasm. They haven't taken any of the fight out of them yet. Intercepted. I beg your pardon. He came down with it. Well, there was a lot of contact on that side. Cosby working one on one on the outside did an excellent job working against Murillo, who's drawn coverage on that side. And Cosby did an excellent job. Everyone here in the Texas program talking about how Cosby has just made play after play this season. Looked like Cosme may have stepped out of bounds, but because he was he forced was out, forced. able to come yeah. back in as long as you establish and make the play. Jamal Charles, he's going to be knocked down for about a half yard loss. Steinkuhler, Ty Steinkuhler, a junior out of right there in Lincoln. His dad was uh, an All American defensive player up there, went on to be a first round draft choice of the Houston Orders. That also won the Outland Trophy, one of the many trophy winners at Nebraska. Lots of hardware in that building. What they're going to look at is, uh, is you know, being forced out of bounds. He is out. It looked to me like he was out, but it was the defender that pushed him there, and he established himself yeah. back in the field of play. I, I think that is a, a catch. I, I think it's right to take a look at it. It did look like for a moment Quan Cosby's foot may have stepped on the line and been out of bounds, but as long as he comes back in, as long as he was forced out by the defender, which it looked to me like Marillo had forced him out. So the, the first down play that the at the review play stands is called the receiver was pushed out of bounds did not go out on his own. It is a completion and apparently the referee marks had been buzzed before that first down play. So that play did not count. And now for Bill Callahan not only upset that they allowed the play but they stuffed that first down play so now for Texas instead of second and long they're at first and ten I don't blame Bill Callahan for being upset it looked like that play got off before they stopped it as long as the referee was buzzed before the snap though then that play does not count and now they may be talking about what time is on the clock because well, the, the down marker still shows first down as well. Well, it is.
is first down and ten because if they buzzed it then that one didn't count. I think that's what not only the fact that they allowed the catch with Bill Callahan upset that it's not second and long. McCoy going to go long. Incomplete Billy Pittman was the intended receiver. It was Green who was there covering. Dayton. Nebraska has taken a real chance, but it is working. They are putting so many men in the box. <laughs> that time they hit nine men at the line of scrimmage. Well, the one thing that Nebraska has been pretty good this year on defense, they've been taking their lumps in the run game, giving up over 300 rush yards in three different games. They've been pretty good in their secondary. And right now, other than a couple of zone uh, openings, when they're matched up man to man, they've been running stride for stride. So the coverage has been very good for Kevin Cosgrove so far today. McCoy possibly with an audible. And there's Charles. And here's the chance that you take when you put that many men at the line of scrimmage. The, the where this young man should run is straight ahead because when you're like a 4 3 sprinter, uh, you got nobody that's going to catch you. Yeah, if you get to that second level, the linebackers and those safeties miss. And he almost breaks that last tackle and there's nobody home because there's so many guys down around the line of scrimmage but I don't know that I change if I'm Kevin Cosgrove the defense coordinator in Nebraska you're making Texas earn everything with 508 left in the second quarter hard to believe that Texas only has three points but I think a lot of it has to do with the impressive play call. And let's check in with Jack Arood as that ball was almost intercepted. And I agree with you, Ed. In fact, I had that similar, in fact, exact conversation with Kevin Cosgrove for kickoff. And the one thing he told me, he said, look, with everything that's going on, we're going to play it loose. He said, you know, Jack, one of the things, and I've known him for years, he said, we didn't get stupid overnight. He said, just things haven't fallen our way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the house and we're just going to try and be as creative and play it as loose as we possibly can. And he did have a chuckle. He says, we are playing on the road. Aren't we? <laughs> okay, Jack. Jamal Charles, tailback again. Here they jump into that eight man front. Cosby. McCoy is going to hold on to it and uh, he will be pushed out of bounds at around the 31 yard line. Well, we look at these defensive ranks in the NCAA, and it's that rushing one, 115th out of 119, that really jumps out. And last week against Texas A&M, they just couldn't get the ball out of the hands of Stephen McGee, the quarterback. He went for 167 yards. Of course, USC 313 yards rushing. But the, and the passing numbers. Not great, but if there was a strength of this defense, it is the secondary for Kevin Cosgrove. Eisenhardt has six tackles officially on the afternoon. He has had a very, very good ball game as we look at a third down, and Texas needs to take it to the Cornhusker 22 yard line. They show blitz, and here they come. Pass near sideline, caught complete, and that will be enough for the first down at the 21 yard line by Quan Cosby. <laughs> Pressure. This time the offensive line for Texas did a very good job of picking out an all out blitz. And Zach Bowman over there with one on one coverage on Cosby. And Cosby does an excellent job of running him off and cutting it off. Difference there, remember the last time when Nebraska Purify didn't get enough depth past the sticks, that time Cosby did. So it's first down Longhorns. 448 left until halftime. We're tied at three. Nebraska comes with the pressure again. McCoy steps up inside and he'll make a couple of yards out of the play. Zach Potter, the junior out of Omaha. I'm with you, Ron. You, you mentioned earlier how much you want McCoy running around. We'll go back to that game against Kansas State when he suffered a mild concussion. It didn't look like he was going to even be able to play in the second half. There were some questions about whether he was going to be able to play the next week against Oklahoma. And I, when he gets out in the open, unless there's open turf, I would be coaching him up to slide. Tenth play of the drive. You see the spin move by Charles, and then he's taken down on a very sure tackle by Asante. A 
of names we have not heard. Jordan Shipley, who we thought we'd see a lot of, and Jermichael Finley. Nothing from Finley. No, and Finley, who had that monster game against Oklahoma. And this is that territory yeah. where you look to maybe slide him into the scene and see if you can't get him towards the goal line. I'll tell you, with the men that they are putting on the line of scrimmage, I wonder if he's having trouble getting out on a route. Yeah, he may be staying in. You're exactly right. Here he is lined up right here. Maybe look for him to try to split that scene. Timeout called by Texas. Timeout, Texas. They're first to the half. So let's take a timeout. Texas three and Nebraska three, 326 left until halftime. Well, Jim Brown's not in the top 10. I, I'd like, can't wait to see what that top 10 is. <laughs> yeah. Better be some pretty good ones. Now Nebraska backs off. They showed pressure. McCoy comes back, throws to the end zone, and just throws it away. Now, the, the coaches are saying he went across the line of scrimmage. It doesn't matter. If you come back, still a legal forward pass. And I'm not, I'm not convinced he did go beyond it. I mean, he was close, but it looked yeah. to me like he caught himself right before he did and wisely threw that. Now, let's see if he did, in fact, the blue line right there. Yeah, he wasn't even close. Yeah, wasn't well, you know what? I think the coaches, Nebraska coaches, saw that stick, the first down marker, and thought yeah. maybe that was a line of scrimmage. No, it was it was third and seven, not third and ten. Bailey with a 34-yard attempt. And Ryan's kick is going to be wide left and no good. And Smokey sounded anyway. And let's check in with New York and Matt Weiner. Matt? All right, Ron, let's get you up to date on what's happening in Eugene, Oregon. That potent offense is dominated statistically, but they've turned it over a couple of times, and now USC has just tied it up. Mark Sanchez to big Patrick Turner in the end zone. Nine yards on the touchdown. It's a 10-all game there. In Jacksonville, Georgia's just scored on Noshan Moreno's second touchdown run of the game, and the Bulldogs lead Florida 21-17. Remember, Georgia's lost eight of nine in that series. So four-point lead right there. Our situation. Bailey misses a short one, and we're still tied. Middle screen, and the tackle made immediately. And that's going to be no gain at the 20. Frank Okan was holding on to the receiver for dear life. As, as tough as a year as it's been for Nebraska on defense, that was a huge win for them. They weathered the storm of a big, long Texas drive, made enough plays to make them force the field goal, had enough good coverage, didn't give up any big runs, had the 110 yarder by Jamal Charles. But Nebraska, you feel hanging in here, hanging in here. And this is exactly what Mac Brown told us yesterday that he was fearful of. Lucky. And Marlon is not so lucky on this play. He's going to be dropped for a two yard loss by Derek Loki. And Nebraska. Rackpo's the guy who's going to mess it up to start. Wow, look at the quickness getting inside of Nix. Even though he doesn't make the tackle, he allows the pressure to come. And now Nebraska with no timeouts playing it very conservative, trying to melt this clock a little bit so that if they do have to punt, Texas is going to have a hard time trying to score. I can see why they'd be conservative down in their territory. Throws it out of the backfield. That's lucky. And Marlon Lucky's still on his feet, and he'll take it out to around the 38-yard line. Bobino on the stop, and that's good for 19 yards. Excellent block downfield by Nate Swift. As the ball comes out, watch the inside receiver come get a absolute blow-up block when he sees that this ball gets picked up. Here he is right here. Excellent job peeling back on the linebacker and making a big hit. Nice job by Nate Swift helping out the running back. So from the 38 yard line pass to the near sideline it is caught and stepping out immediately is Purify. And now Sam Keller now that they're away from the line of scrimmage they're needing to hurry up and this is a good job by 
Sam getting people moving because now that you're getting near midfield now you don't have to be conservative now you can take some shots and Sam's having himself a really nice first half. Well it was uh, Bobino who was close enough to it. Boy he stared him down and <laughs> waited forever to throw the ball. They burned a lot of the clock on that last play and with that sequence at least the incomplete pass stops it at 56. I think Nebraska thought that they went out of bounds on that play. Yeah. And, and I think that it, it kind of got him out of sorts because that did take too much time to get off that second down play. Keller 11 of 14 94 yards. Lucky open side of the field turns the corner at the 30 at the 25 it is finally tackled at the 20 yard line by Dion Beasley and boy the angle of pursuit by Texas for two defensive players was really not very good. No they got sucked up in there. Yeah I think that they were thinking inside zone play and this becomes the old student body right you see Sean Hill out there the H back pulled the guard pulled to that side and Beasley and the safety had horrible angles. I think they were expecting inside run. Good play call by Nebraska. Well that timeout that they called that they did not need right, and snap. right now. Full start. 67 of the offense. Is devastating. Five yard penalty. Bad. First down. Well, and now you've got to start thinking about now that you're already in field goal range. Well you, you've hurt yourself with the penalty but you're still in field goal range. If it's not near the sideline it's almost better to get an incomplete pass. Either throw it beyond the sticks in the end zone or near the sideline or don't throw it at all. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie in our New York studio. They'll help scores and highlights as Halu comes into the ball game at tailback for the Huskers. Keller over the middle, incomplete, and the ball, I believe, was tipped, intended for Terrence Nunn. And I think it was Brian Arakpo again. Excellent job by Arakpo. Tipping this ball sec I believe his second tip of the game it was a zone blitz. No I don't think he got it but that ball just thrown behind Terrence Nunn. Texas comes with a blitz pass over the middle wide open touchdown Nate Swift. yards on the pass play. Well, that was blown coverage. Nate Swift in the slot just was not identified by Texas and give a lot of credit to the defense of Nebraska. They weathered the storm of a long Texas drive and held him to a field goal try that was no good and that pumped up the entire Nebraska sideline. Henry with the extra point and he's got it. And with 36 seconds showing on the clock until halftime with no timeouts after Nebraska had unwisely just burned a timeout. But what we couldn't really even tell why. And they still maybe it forced them into more of a hurry up situation. Ed. Well and, and they were playing a conservative because yeah. they were down. And the safety just got hung up on the outside. That was a cover two zone where the safety has the deep half to that side. And he got he got hung up on the vertical route to that side. Excellent job by Sam Keller looking him off. And the safety, Otawego is just late getting over there. I'll tell you something. The play that Texas really has to fault themselves over. Third down, and they throw to the running back lucky he turns it into a 17 yard gain they were expecting to have to punt the football there to me was that's the one that changed the entire drive. Well Nate Swift the guy who just catches the touchdown was the guy who threw the key block on the linebacker who was running over to get lucky so it's nice that Swift was able to finish up when he started because if he doesn't make that block I think they are punting the ball. <laughs> Fanatic will uh, kick it off. And I would imagine this one would be on the ground or very close to it. Nope, kicks it away and into the wind. Like the last time, it's going to be short from the 15 is Cosby. 
And Cosby is going to be wrapped up at the 23 yard line. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, both offenses had a few drives that moved up and down, but then the defenses settled down. Bailey gets a field goal for Texas to go up 3 0, and then Henry. Nails one for three, and then between that, Bailey missed a field goal before this Nate Swift touchdown. And again, I, you go back to that 17-yard gain by Marlon Lucky on a third and long. Yeah. That looked like <laughs> Texas was going to get the ball back with plenty of time and two timeouts. And now down 10-3, two timeouts. I still think you may try to get something going. Draw play. That's Jamal Charles. And it looks as though they're just going to run it out. No, nope, they're going to call a timeout to stop the clock. 22 seconds. Well, I think you're far enough out. If you were at about the 15-yard line, your own 15, I think you'd let it run out. But with two timeouts and out near the 30, I think this is the right decision. Go ahead, use that timeout. See if you can't get one more play out near midfield and then give it one heave-ho by Colt McCoy. Why not take the shot? And let's check in with Jack Arute again. You know, Ron and Ed, with all the problems in the turmoil in Lincoln, Nebraska, the one thing that it has not affected is the spirit and the tightness of this team. The Cornhuskers were called to a players meeting after the Missouri loss, and their head coach stood up and asked them one question. Who do you play for? It ended up with a 45 minute animated session where Sam Keller and others talked about the importance of playing for themselves, much the way you alluded to, Ed, at the beginning of this telecast. McCoy just has to throw this one away. And McCoy got knocked down hard after he delivered the ball by Zach Potter. Zach Potter, one of the most improved defensive linemen. And now if I am Texas I, on this third down, I think I may, with it, Nebraska no timeouts, I may just take a knee. Uh, right now, it's, I think it's regroup time for Texas. Nebraska has outplayed them a little bit here physically in this second quarter and I, I don't know that I would want Colt McCoy to take another hit before we went into halftime. So 18 seconds showing on the clock until halftime third down and a little counter play goes to Jamal Charles and he'll pick up the first down I believe as he steps out of bounds just beyond the marker. Murillo is the guy who got back over there to help push him out of bounds. Well, if, if Charles did not pick up that first down and went out of bounds, Texas may be in a punting situation. So, again, I, I just think you maybe want to run this thing out. I, I don't know the upside right now with 12 seconds. If there's something bad happens, some kind of interception that might get returned, I think you may want to sit this one out. Open eye is in the ball game. He is a guy that they have one trick play with anyway. But they throw it to Jermichael Finley, and the first time that we have called the big tight end's name, seven seconds showing on the clock. It's going to be a gain of 12. And Texas is going to hustle up to kill it so that they have time for one more play before they have to use that tight end or the timeout, excuse me. And that's what they do. So only one second goes off the clock. Well, and with six seconds, if you get a quick out route, you can run two plays. You know, if you're, if you're going to throw it towards the end zone, I think you want to try to get five, maybe ten more yards before you do that if you're Texas. Well, they have dropped off. They, meaning Nebraska, Tier Green is all the way back to the 15-yard line and still retreating. And here's the three wide receiver side. And McCoy is going to be sacked at the 42 yard line by Pulaski. That's the second time that they've gotten to him and we are at halftime. And Nebraska that stop where they forced Bailey to try the field goal that he missed got a lot of energy out of that stop three man rush they get a sack to end the half. So our score at halftime is Nebraska 10 and Texas 3. We'll be joining John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Foody in our New York studio for the Capital One Halftime Show right after this. You're watching ESPN on ABC.
Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Well, it is uh, 10 to 3 as we start the third quarter, and it is a beautiful day as far as Austin, Texas is concerned. Right now, the sun is shining literally and figuratively on Nebraska. It's not shining <laughs> on the Longhorns because the Huskers trying to uh, rain on their parade, so to speak, here this afternoon. Rather shocking. I mean, coming yeah. into this game, Nebraska was a 21-point underdog. Yeah. But Texas just continued to give Nebraska reasons to stay in this game. And Texas knew that if they allowed Nebraska to hang around, they'd see some things happen. Texas went on a long drive. And I think the thing that changed the momentum was at the end of that drive, they lined up for a field goal that was missed by Ryan Bailey. As we take a look at the highlights from the first half, I think this was the key play, this missed field goal, because as Nebraska ran off the field, they had all all the momentum in the world the sidelines erupted Marlon Lucky on a toss sweep almost breaks at the distance on a big third down and then Nate Swift with the safety coming over late gets the touchdown and you can sense that this Nebraska team feels like they have a chance to win today in Austin and they you, you wouldn't expect that at halftime of this game and let's go down to the sideline and uh, Jack Aru Jack well Ron understandably Bill Callahan is ecstatic with the score he told me he says look we decided to come with a radical game plan we have no reason to change he says the guys are higher than a kite he says we're, Jack expect more of the same of what you saw in the first half well Jack you know to me and I want to get Ed to talk about this I saw no real adjustments on the part of Texas uh, to try to counter all the eight men in the box stuff because once they caught them and tried to make a change. All of a sudden, they dropped into a dime package. First time I saw them in that the entire day. And if I'm Texas, the adjustment I would make, you've got good receivers on the outside. Cosby Jones starts some fades and some slants. If they're going to play man coverage, bring everybody in, block up the middle, and I think you can win one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, but you've got to get the time. No kicking with the wind. That one's going to go six yards deep. And they'll scrimmage for the 20. Jack Root, back to you. Well, I asked uh, Coach uh, uh, Coach Mack about that. And I, I said, why are you not going to change things up? He said, Jack, look, I told my team very simply, they've got nothing to lose, Nebraska. He says, they're playing and they're having fun. We are tighter than a drum. He said, well, I want my players to do is go out, forget about what the schemes are, forget about what we call. He's challenged his team to go out and play with the same sort of reckless abandon that the Nebraska Cornhuskers played in the first half. He said, Jack, just look for us to have more fun. Going to have about four yards. Let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary in the first half stats. The one that jumped out to me was the total yards for Texas. I expected them to be much higher than 209 yards, but you would think with 209 they'd have more points. Of course, they moved the ball well a couple of times between the 20s, but again, give Nebraska credit. And I think. I think Coach Brown is exactly right. What he told Jack is exactly right. One team came to play loose and free and have some fun, and the other team, his team, is not that way. Keller got the pass away, and he's got it complete to Hardy, and Hardy is up and running at the 30, 25, and knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line by Marcus Griffin. That is good for 56 yards. And it was the play action that got this all started. Remember, Bill Callahan told Jack, we're going to do the same thing that we were doing in the first half, which was that little inside zone. Well, that time, they did run it, and that's just bad leverage by Ryan Palmer. And then the safety Griffin has to come over. Palmer just got completely out of position, and everyone else was sucked up on that run play. From the 20, this is Lucky, and he'll be stopped after a gain of about a yard. Bobino from his middle linebacking position. And Franz Hardy is the fastest player on this team. That's his fifth career reception of 50 or more yards, and that was all set up because of that play action. Palmer got himself out of position. That's twice that we've seen the secondary of Texas get completely out of position on big plays, and their angles are just off. Yep, they surely were. It is a second down and nine for the 19-yard line. And 
that's going to be a five yard mark off against Nebraska. Prior to the snap, false start, 59 in the offense. Five yard penalty, second half. Well, that's uh, one of the team captains. Byford, the center, senior out of Parksell, Alabama. And these are the types of plays. There's 59 right in the middle of your screen. Yeah, sure did. And those are the types of plays after a big play that yeah. just really, because they're non competitive, you don't even get to run the play. So it's second down and 14. Penalty moves it back to the 24 yard line. Keller looking. Gets it out in the flat. It's complete and hit immediately as Marlon Lucky. And that's Scott Derry, the linebacker, who is all over him. And it will be third down for Nebraska. Well, and you are in field goal territory already if you're Nebraska. And Texas can play coverage. You have to assume Texas is going to play coverage, not blitz. I would think some type of fade or a post and try to get the safety down. Derry, by the way, with six tackles in the ball game, right over the middle. First guy out to practice. He looked like Nate Swift with the touchdown. Exact same route combination they ran at the end of the half. It was a post by Swift and the safety. Otto never saw. I, I have a piece of advice. Mac better. His players better stop having fun. They better start covering some people for <laughs> yeah. Nebraska. Well, that's the exact same play that Nebraska ran for the touchdown at the end of the half, and it was the exact same safety out of Wago who didn't see Swift running the post. Extra point attempt up, and it is good by Henry. And with 12 minutes and 32 seconds showing on the clock, the new score, Nebraska 17 and Texas 3. As we take one more look, here's the touchdown pass to Nate Swift. You're watching ESPN on ABC. So we are back 17 to 3 Swift with his second touchdown pass and uh, just at least the routes were the same on the two touchdowns. At least he got hit on the first one. This one <laughs> there was nobody yeah. around here. Wow. Well, it? There was confusion in the secondary both times and the safety out of Wago never got over the top of Swift. He was so worried about purifying on the outside. Here's the kick and uh, this is going to be held up coming down at the 12th yard line is Cosby and Cosby will put a head down and take it across to 25 Ed, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Well here you got Nate Swift in the slot and purified they're worried about this vertical route so when the release comes there's no way Ottawa gets back over the top of that. Now because there's two receivers to the other side. The safety that has the other half of the field has to go with the vertical route on that side and it's wide open. It's tough when there's two vertical routes to one side. It's tough for that safety, but the dangers to the middle of the field. Your corner is going to be able to play a little bit softer off the other side. Expect a tougher throw to the outside than the inside. Well, Jamal Charles will take it for a couple of yards. And let's go back down to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, the offense, Sean Watson, is really coaching them up, guys. And one of the things he just said, he said, look, guys, you go into it now. They were playing at 0-0. But he challenged his offense to do something. He said, now you guys are playing so well, you need to get up off your keisters, and I use that as a quote, and push on and promise your defense. What he meant by that is go out and cheer those guys on, get the defense to play hard as well. We'll wait and see. All righty, Jack. I think it's incumbent upon Texas to come up with an answer to something here pretty shortly because <laughs> you not only have a situation where Texas has allowed the Cornhuskers to hang around they've done more than hang around they've taken advantage and now with a 14 point lead and I want to go back to what some Jack told us earlier something about Sean Watson coming one of the adjustments they made was he came down out of the booth he was the eyes for Bill Callahan Bill Callahan and Sean worked together calling the plays but I think this has been the right move to get Sean Watson the quarterbacks coach as well as the offense coordinator down onto the field so it's more of an emotional thing and that's maybe what this team needed.
pass caught right over the middle, Obanaya, and it'll be a Texas first down at the 40, a gain of 10 yards. Excellent job by McCoy. That was not a blitz that time. Nebraska has been able to get pressure just rushing forward. They're winning some one-on-one -on -one battles up front, but that time McCoy, even though he was avoiding a rush, kept his eyes down the field and was able to make a throw. Nice heads-up play. That time Nebraska showed as though they might come with pressure and then dropped five deep, so they went into a nickel situation. And the safety valve worked perfectly. Nebraska 17 to 3 21 point underdogs coming into this ball game. Jamal Charles will take it for about three Barfield defensively for the Huskers. A lot was made after the Oklahoma loss about Colt McCoy and how he had a tearful speech to his team about dedicating more to this team and the coaches have been pushing Colt McCoy to be a little more of a vocal leader. Well if a vocal leader was needed for Texas right now in Mac Brown it, it could be Colt McCoy but they definitely need somebody to step up. Well. Charles goes straight ahead and he is going to be short of the first down by three. Let's uh, go back to New York and Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Ron, no question who the leader was today for West Virginia. That's why Pat White is our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. He ran for 156 yards, threw for another 144. 300 yards total offense and a score. West Virginia kept themselves in the middle of that crowded national title hunt. Text vote, date 7654 in your AT&T wireless phone to cast your vote. Loki, the fullback, the defensive tackle, as uh, he did on one of the opening series of the ball game. McCoy running for his life, throws the pass incomplete. That is Jermichael Finley he was trying to connect with, and it was Larry Asante who was applying the pressure. Fourth down. Well, with Luke Tiemann out. They've been giving Loki a lot of time, but this is a passing down. I would think you would want more of an offensive player in there. And it, it, there was pretty good pocket there, and McCoy just bailed out of it too soon. We saw that a little bit earlier in the season when pressure would break down, he'd have to bail out, but that time he bailed too early. Punt off the side of his foot, and this one's going to turn into gold, though, as it goes inside the 10 and out of bounds at the 7. Well, <laughs> 46 yards in the kick, 17 to 3. Nebraska continues to lead. That was Bebo at his home away from home, the Sunrise Ranch, just outside of Austin. And I uh, have to wonder who might have shot that. And we're going to get a, a closer look at that a little bit later on. Our friend Dirk. Where do you think Bebo would rather be, at home or here? Do you think he really cares tell you what, that Nebraska's probably, in town? If he could put his hoof over his <laughs> eyes right now, he probably would. He needs some shades. Well, Nebraska starts inside their own team for the third time in seven possessions today. the corner 10 15 and let's see they're going to say he's out of bounds at around the 17 yard line Jared Norton the number two middle linebacker replacing the Bobino makes the tackle for the Longhorns and uh, let's take a look at uh, more of the business yesterday at the Sunshine Ranch well that's Dave and Durko Well, <laughs> our buddy Dirk. <laughs> well, we can laugh about it now, but he almost got cored. <laughs> and on the play, the Nebraska running back uh, did as well. A gain of about three. Lucky hit by Sergio Kendall and Lamar Houston. And there. <laughs> that close. <laughs> that close, huh, Dirk? Well, he, you know, he's been working the sidelines for a long time in college football. And he's been run over a couple of times trying to get in close to the action. So 
I know that may have been worse than a 200 pound running back having Bevo get upset at you. Lucky cuts it back up into the middle and he'll take it to the 21. Now it's going to be a third down. Roy Miller defensively. And Miller came up a little hobbled. We've seen Derek Loki playing a bunch of offense today. Kind of unusual to see that. He's, yeah, he's going to come yeah, off. So You're right. has to come off. And while you want your pass rush in there, you, you've got to expect a Rockpo to do something. Somebody's got to start making a play for Texas defensively. Near sideline cannot get back around to make the catch at Purify. He was juggling it as he came out of bounds, and it'll be fourth down for Nebraska. Well, Mac Brown was talking about his team playing loose and free, and Texas over the last several years has been one of the best kick blocking teams in the country. They have zero this year. And you get a sense that this may be one of those times where if you got a block, your team would get right back into the game. Tichner gets the boot away. Good driving kick into the wind. And gathered at the 35 by Cosby. And that is great coverage on the part of the Cornhuskers. 35 yards and a kick and nothing on the return. And now here's our ESPNU All-State standings review. Well, Ohio State with a big one tonight in Happy Valley. Boston College with an unbelievable comeback. And Matt Ryan kept himself in the Heisman race with the end of that game. LSU sitting idle. And Oregon is up 24-10 against USC. And I watched a bit of that game at halftime. They seem to be handling USC very well. So uh, even though Oklahoma idle, you've got to start thinking Oregon's going to start being mentioned in the national championship hunt. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. Dennis Dixon is awfully good at quarterback for Oregon this year. McCoy, there's the quick slant you were just talking about. And uh, Cosby could not hold on, and McCoy is shaken up. Uh, he got hit right on his shin as he let that ball go. Now um, that's Ty Steincooler. Who got in there? Not a dirty play. He was already down on the ground, just trying to finish it. McCoy's okay. He's a tough guy, but Ron through this season, and of course you lost three offensive linemen to the NFL. So of course you're not going to have the same protection. But McCoy has taken a pounding this year versus last year. Nebraska shows blitz. They come after it, and the running play is absolutely nothing. And this is what I'm talking about as far as adjustments that simply haven't happened by Texas. I mean, it, it's same old, same old. It's uh, not what they saw in the first half. Yeah, and the one thing they, they haven't done and they don't do a lot is shifts and motions to make Bill Callahan's troops have to think about where is the strength of the formation. And they Nebraska can just line up. You can see the linebackers, McEwen and Octavian, can just tee off. They don't have to think about anything. I think that Texas should start doing trying to put some shifts and some motion to make Nebraska at least have to think about where they're going to be blitzing from. McCoy is going to run for it at the 40 and is pushed from behind just as he comes out of bounds. That was uh, Tier Green. It's a gain of 12 yards on the play. Well, it just seems that every single pass play is completely breaking down. And it's been pressure, pressure, pressure. You know, Greg Davis said he expected Nebraska to blitz more than the 19%, and very lucky that McCoy did not get hurt as he got pushed legally there at the end of the play. But Nebraska's up around 100% right now. They're blitzing on every single down, it seems. Quite an increase from 19%, right? <laughs> That's what they had been averaging, if you could believe it. If you missed that off the top of the telecast, gain of a couple of yards, McKeon and Murillo combining on the stop. And the thing you'd want to see Texas start to fold in to their offense against a blitz. Jamal Charles on a delay draw because of his speed. If he makes one guy miss, there's nobody home. Start to see some more slants or fades because you're going to have one on one coverage to the outside. You're going to have to start calling some plays knowing the blitz is coming. The 
Pitch goes to Charles. Turns the corner. Gets by one man, and he's going to be close to the first down at the 46 and a half yard line. Jack Aroop. Ron, on that play, we saw what is the strong suit for Jamal Charles. I asked the coaching staff what makes him so good, and they said it's his hips. You could see the way he used those hips on that play to fake out one of the defenders that had the first shot on the tackle. Watch this. There's some hip action, boys. And you don't see that a lot from a world-class sprinter. Let's not forget that Jamal Charles ran a 10 2 300 meters to win the Big 12 championship his freshman year. The issue for Jamal, though, has been fumbles. And uh, Earl Campbell, the former Heisman Trophy winner, has been working with Jamal a little bit on how he holds the ball. And they, there's just times when they fear having Jamal Charles in there. He fumbled on the four-yard line against Oklahoma going into score. So he's great, but he's got to be able to hold on to the rock. You know, Obanaya also has worked with him. And uh, here's the picture of uh, Earl Campbell and uh, Jamal Charles together. And we talked to Jamal Charles about this, and he said, well, he gave me good pointers. The problem is Mr. Campbell has a lot bigger hands than I have, so <laughs> yeah. I have to work with it with what I have. They did not pick up the first down. Montrell McGee, the redshirt freshman, comes in, and McCoy will go straight ahead. And well, if he picked it up, it's just going to be barely. I think it was the second surge of that offensive line mm -hmm. that picked it up. Dallas Griffin, the senior, and Dominican Sue on the tackle. You got it right. Yeah. Is that Brandon Berg who did the. Uh, Yes, the opening the linebacker said, Mr. Franklin, you better get this name right. Yeah, Lance, we, it's, it's correct, my friend. Sue is easy to say, and I think that's what we'll stay with. And Indomicon means House of Spears. Obanaya comes back into the ballgame at uh, tailback. Nebraska continues to jump around a defense and here they come McCoy got single coverage near sideline and it is knocked away on a nice defensive play that was Bowman side Bowman the senior out of Anchorage against Quan Cosby and he was up to the task what Bowman timed this perfectly didn't he this looked like it was going to fall right in the lap of Cosby and he read the eyes you teach the cornerbacks all the time if you don't turn and find the ball read the eyes of the receiver and his hands and his eyes will tell you when the ball is coming and Bowman gets his hand up just in time to get a piece of that ball otherwise it's a big completion for Cosby McCoy is now 10 of 22 137 yards good look at Zach on the far sideline getting a breather It's going to be either defensive holding or pass interference. One of the two, and I think it's Grixby who had just come back into the lineup working against Cosby. Contact when the ball's in the air. You, in college football, First down. in college football, you can make contact until the ball's in the air. If you do it afterwards, it is pass interference. And let's go down to Jack Aru with a special guest. Oh, Jack. yeah. He's no stranger when it comes to the sidelines. Roger Clemens, you brought your boys out to take a look at this well, game. We did. I took my two older ones up to Baylor, and uh, the two, my two young ones are here with me today. One of my other child's on the other sidelines, Java Chamberlain. I kicked him to the other sideline. I noticed that because you were together in the first half, and what did you do, banish yeah, him to the other side? It. I'm not talking to him. We're going to shake hands at midfield, I think, and uh, hopefully our uh, <laughs> luck will change. Hold on one second. After this play, I want to ask you a question. Okay, Jack. <laughs> Yeah, the running play goes for maybe a yard. Let's go back to you, Jack. Uh, let's talk a little baseball. Your reaction to the announcement that Joe is not going to come back and manage? Well, I, I've, I've not had a better manager and, and a better man. And, uh, you know, I loved everything about what uh, Joe, what Joe was all about and what he brought to the Yankees and how he handled all of us. And uh, I know that I probably wouldn't have uh, attempted to come back and uh, do what I did, th did this year if Joe wasn't around. So... Well, one thing I want to give you is a cell phone that yeah. works Thank so that you, when yeah. you call your wife the next time and say you're going to play some more, it doesn't drop out, yeah. okay? Yeah, I've, Jack, I've seen that look many times. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Okay, thanks, Jack. The Rocket, of course, uh, 
pitched here and is probably as big an orange blood as there is around as Charles can't get around the corner defensively Brandenburg with a nice play and of course he was talking about Jabba Chamberlain who he came to the game yeah. with his teammate from the from Nebraska. yeah he played it Nebraska Chamberlain did became the setup man for the Yankees and uh, they parted ways and of course it's because Jabba was probably there he is probably uh, run his mouth a little bit with this score and now Texas behind the chains again Ron it's like every time they get down into this area they start going backwards third down at about 11 10th play of the drive McCoy under pressure now hit as he throws the ball and they say incomplete pass and that was Courtney Grixby who hit him just as the ball was unloaded boy McCoy just he continues to take big hits we saw earlier Stein cooler got down around his shin and this one you got pressure coming from behind excellent job by Grixby who came on the corner blitz and now you're looking at a lengthy field goal for Ryan Bailey. Now this one is going to be placed down at the 37 yard line to a 47 yard attempt. 52 is his longest. And he's got plenty of distance on this one and plenty of accuracy. He's good. So two of three today. Our new score at the 356 mark is Nebraska 17 and Texas 6. And we go to break, taking one more look at Bailey with a 47 yard field goal. In Atlanta tomorrow, 17 to 6. And if you just joined us, uh, it's not reversed. Nebraska coming into this one a 21 point underdog and right now they lead by 11 points over the homestanding Texas Longhorns. You know yesterday we were talking with Mac Brown of Texas. You could see he had genuine concern. He didn't know if his guys had bought into the fact that Nebraska coming here was going to play all out. They were going to throw out anything you'd seen on film and uh, he just wasn't convinced that his team bought into it and I I share his concern for him now because I see why he was. Well, this one is not going to be returned by Grixby. And let's go back to Jack with another special gift. Jack? Well, yeah, I caught up with Roger's uh, other son. He's been banished over to the Nebraska job at Chamberlain. What did you say to your guy to get you so, get him so ticked off to send you over here? Oh, you know what happens when you're so old? You're like he is, you got a, you got a lot of love for your team. So I got to get him going over there. And, and I was over on that side for a while, but, you know, I had to show my loyalty over here. I hate to break the news to you. He was dialing up Cashman and saying something about how he needed to trade you. He would do something like that. But, you know, he only plays half a year, so he doesn't have to worry about things like that. <laughs> Hold on one second. I do have a question, baseball question right. for you. You never look so good. Half the season. That's no wonder good. he kicked him out. <laughs> oh, big hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain. That's an OK. And let's go back to Jack. Dub, I want to go back to the Cleveland series. How bad were those Nats? You know, it was part of the game. They were bad, but it was, uh, it's something you got to deal with. And, you know, uh, hopefully you only gave up one, but you know, things have gone better. Now, I know you're not Rudy Giuliani, but who are you pulling for in the in the World Series? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see anybody that's good at what they do, so just see a good series. He's running for president, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Java team. <laughs> Uh, who is a huge uh, Nebraska Cornhusker backer. And of course, pitcher for the, for the Yankees. That ball is caught. He's going to be short at the first down. And it's Terrence Nunn. So it'll be third down at about a yard. And if I am Texas right now, if I'm Dwayne Aquina, the co-defense coordinator and defensive back coach, I'm telling my safeties, do not bite on a play action. This is a perfect moment on third and short for Sam Keller to go with a play fake and try to get one over the top to somebody like Swift or Purify. We shall see. Well, I'll tell you, Lucky is not going to make it for the first down. Sergio Kendall showing his speed. Well, Kendall is a part of the second group of linebackers here. There's the veterans, and then there's the young guys 
with the talent and the speed, and Kendall did an excellent job. He couldn't, as an outside linebacker, get over the top, but he did a great job getting up underneath the block and making the tackle. He finally, finally is beginning to show what his billing was when he came here, which was an all-everything high school linebacker. Good kick into the wind, particularly. High-hanging spiral taken at the 35 by Cosby. Well, another story from last week. North Dakota State upsetting Minnesota. Last week in Minneapolis, fourth quarter, North Dakota State receiver Thor Brown gets a seven-yard pass from Steve Walker to go up 24-21. North Dakota State won it eventually 27-21. to Coach Craig Broyle and the Bison begin to celebrate. Coach Boyle formerly was defense coordinator for these uh, Cornhuskers. Yeah, and they knocked off North Dakota State two Division I A schools this year, and they're not even eligible for the championship division playoffs because they're still transitioning from Division II. McCoy lobs it, has it complete, and that is Cosby, and Cosby breaks it inside the 35. It's good for 33 yards on the play. That time, McCoy really using his head. He didn't want to carry the ball and get racked again. Throw to a speedy receiver. And did an excellent job of throwing. And watch Cosby come all the way across. You've got to stay alive. What an excellent job by Cosby. He was just running a little hitch. Did an excellent job of staying alive. And you're right. Colt McCoy did a good job of running away from pressure and threw a great ball. Running play for a couple. Moreno tackles Jamal Charles. You get a sense that Texas needed a play like that to get some type of momentum. This momentum in this stadium has been over on the sunny side since about midway through the first quarter, and you get a sense that that type of play may have woken up Matt Brown's Longhorns. 110 remaining, third quarter. Nebraska 17, Texas 6. Blitz coming off the corner, and he makes the tackle. That's the cornerback, Murillo, who came right in to tackle Jamal Charles. And you hear the boos mm -hmm. from the crowd. Well, and this is a blitz that Kevin Cosgrove has been calling the corner. Watch him come in yeah. and make the tackle, and they just don't have an answer for it. This play, it's a draw, it's a uh, a little bit of a counteraction, so it takes longer to get going, and that allows the corner to get there. If you just roll straight ahead, you may be able to get there. Time permitting, stay tuned for the Dell Post Game Report. John, Craig, and Doug are going to have scores and highlights from around the country. Third down, Texas needs the 24-yard line. Blitz coming again. McCoy steps up, tries to get away from it. Tony Hill helping out. And now just throws the ball away and then gets thrown down late. And McCoy is up saying, where's the flag? I had already delivered the football. It's Barry Turner who was chasing, but it was Corey McEwen who came on the blitz. Well, you couldn't tell if Turner knocked him down or if their feet just got tangled up, but it sure looked like from up here like he did get pushed down. But give all the credit in the world to the defensive staff of Nebraska. They have not let up from the first snap of the game. They have brought a multitude of blitzes. And this offensive line for Texas and the fullbacks and the tight ends just haven't been able to deal with it. And Texas, I think, is going to need to take a timeout here. You don't want to rush this. Well. Had to rush it, but they ain't got it anyway. <laughs> and let's go down and check in with Jack Aroot following that uh, 49 yard field goal. Yeah, Ron, let me give you an update on the Longhorns defense. Backup defensive tackle Roy Miller has been taken to the locker room. They suspect an injury to his ankle. They are going to give him an x ray. They don't, do not expect him to return. You know, we were talking during the break about field goals. And here Texas sits with only three field goals. Of course, the long throw to Quan Kazi, which is a nice play. And you get.
get the sense in this game the way Nebraska is playing free and easy especially on defense and Keller has gotten hot a couple of times that field goals aren't going to get it done. Texas is going to have to find a way when they get down to the 30 or 20 to finish these drives and they haven't been able to do it. Yep. Now you're exactly right there. Get the feeling that the players from Nebraska bought into what Bill Callahan was telling them. Yes. Don't play for the coaches. Play for yourselves. You have a lot to play for. A bowl game and your futures. Don't worry about us. We're grown men. Play for yourselves. You get a feeling that that message sunk in. Hunter Lawrence with the kick. And this one will not be returnable as well. Show because the ball did not go in play. The two seconds remains in the third quarter. Five plays, 33 yards, and made it with a 49 yard field goal. And I would want to see Nebraska go back to that inside zone run play with Marlon Lucky and Castile and Halu. They had a lot of success with that in the first quarter and a half, and we haven't seen much of it since. I would want them to start, if I'm a Nebraska fan, start shrinking the clock a little bit and getting four five six yards of carry figuring with Miller out on the defensive line that the defensive line of Texas may start to get worn out. So with two seconds left Keller goes under center. Derry, the linebacker who was showing blitz, and Lucky will take it for about three yards, and that is the end of the third quarter. So we'll be back. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. See the score by quarters. Nebraska 10 in the second, 7 in the third. Pitch comes back to Lucky, turns the corner, has 5, has 10, and then steps out of bounds at around the 33 yard line. And let's check in with Jack Aru. All right, Ron, Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator for the Huskers, continues to coach his offense. He told them during that break, he said, guys, look, feed off of each other. Continue to show poise. Continue to look to each other for help, no matter what comes your way. And then he reminded them as well, and you've got to continue to encourage our defense. And I think that's a big key. I, I think that this offense has fed off the aggressive nature of their defense. I Most really do. Their defense has had some time to rest in this ball game. We saw them up in Missouri. They played all night. This is Halo. And hit in the open field and stopped after a couple. That's Brandon Foster who got out there to make the hit. And you go back to Sean Watson coming out of the booth, coming down onto the field. That's a tall order. Right? And I've always felt that head coaches, very few can be involved in the play calling. And that's a tall order for Bill Callahan to be the play caller. He's always done that his whole career. He's only been a head coach a couple of times at Oakland and here and didn't want to give that up. But I think it's a good move to have Sean Watson down on the field with him helping out. Aaron Lewis is back in the ball game as a flag goes down. Number 95 at defensive end. Right on the snap. Full start, 72 offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Jack? Well, Ron, I asked Sean Watson before the game, I said, when was the last time that you coached from the sidelines? He thought, he thought some more, and he said, you know, Jack, I can't remember. It might have been all the way back to when I was a GA. Can you believe that? Wow. 
Well, you see the play selection, 31 rushing, 21 passing, for a total of 53. Marlon Lucky in the ball game. He gets a shovel pass, and then a good open field tackle. That's Bovino. Bobino, the middle linebacker, was not fooled, and he caught him around the ankles, which is about the only place you can tackle a guy like Marlon Lucky, who will break your tackle and go for another 10 quickly. Well, that's a nice tackle. Good finish, and now you've got a third and long, and finally this crowd that had been kind of booing some of the play calling on offense getting back into it. Dion Beasley, a sophomore out of West Orange Start down in the what is called the triangle, the magic triangle down in southeastern Texas. Well, that was a dangerous throw by Sam Keller because Beasley could not have had better coverage. Ooh, does an excellent job of breaking on the ball, working one on one on Terrence Nunn, and he very close to making a play. One of the things that Texas has been thriving on this year is big plays on the part of the defense, and they have not gotten one today. That was a possibility, but he couldn't hold on. Fair catch is signal for and made by Cosby at the 26. 40 yards and a kick. We'll be right back. 17 to 9, Nebraska. Okay, Matt. Well, Austin Stadium. Great place. It's a tough place to play, isn't it? If you're the visiting team. Yep. I uh, went to University of Washington. Never got a win there. It's an yeah. unbelievable place. Obanaya is at tailback, and he'll fake it to him. And McCoy going to go long. Cosby. And is that? Well, it was a two-man route. It was a trail underneath, but and McCoy is down. Well. The last time we were here, which was the last time Texas was here against Kansas State, we saw a lot of this. It was a push right there, and it's exactly what we saw. That was Philip Dillard, exactly what we saw against Kansas State, the same type of push where he lands and his head hits the turf. Well, and it's this. It's the second time that it's happened with a push, and the officials have not seen fit to uh, throw a marker on it. Well, all day for Colt McCoy, he has faced a very stiff rush, a lot of blitzing, way more than Nebraska had done coming into this game, but they've also got pressure, pressure with the front four, and that looked very similar to the hit that Colt McCoy took against Kansas State when he suffered the mild concussion, and they allowed him to come back into that game. Now, of course, you talk about John Childs, the true freshman. Sherrod Harris, who they expected to be the backup, not quite healthy from a knee injury in camp so you'd expect Childs and it's it'll be a, a different offense with Childs in there he's more of an option spread uh, veer type of quarterback when you take a look at the numbers for Nebraska it has been a disastrous season of course Nebraska goes by the black shirts their defense and they voted as a team to take that away. And Kevin Cosgrove has to be so proud of what his team has done today versus what they came in here giving up. This is one of the worst defenses in the country, and they've played lights out this afternoon. John Childs in the game at uh, quarterback. Freshman right out of high school. Played at Summit High School in Dallas. And here's Jamal Charles, and this is what Ed was talking about. Give him a breath, and you get blown away. That's 25 yards just like that. Well, and now with Childs, and, and we saw this play a couple of times with Colt McCoy. Now the defense has to slow down because of this guy. He could keep this ball. And you've got two Nebraska defenders who have to stay home on the backside because of that ability of Childs to run, and you take a little of the aggressiveness out of it. McCoy back into the ball game and Giles will come out a little surprised that Charles tried to juke him instead of just running past him. And that's Marillo the cornerback. Yeah, he is helped off and he has played a really good ball game for them. 
leaning under his own power, though that's good. He's got six tackles on the afternoon, uh, does Moreno. Blitz off the corner, and McCoy's going to keep it. McCoy inside the 25. They brought the corner blitz, and he ran right by. Exact same play. And McCoy can run this. Do not think that McCoy cannot run the zone read. And watch the blitz, and there's going to be the scene right there that McCoy takes. Excellent job of him pulling that back out. Sometimes you tell the quarterback, read it and give it to the running back, and sometimes you just tell him, just keep it. Just do the fake. That one looked to me like that was the design quarterback run the whole way. 24 yards on that play. 25 on the run by Charles a moment ago. And here's Charles in the secondary, and he'll score. And Texas, Mac Brown trying to get control of the sideline. They're going to have to go for two. Some people had to be awakened and sitting in the stands because they have not had a lot to cheer about this afternoon. But this is what you were alluding to with Charles. When you put him with a quick hitter, if somebody makes an error, it is goodbye. Well, and they're lining up for their first two point conversion attempt of the season. They're lined up in the same formation, maybe the same run combination. You see. The Cornhuskers ganging up in the middle. Lob pass in the middle is going to be too tall for Jermichael Finley. Well, they wanted, they're trying to get it to Jermichael Finley, and he was held. There was no doubt about it that Lance Brandenburg held Finley. McCoy, right when he threw it, started yelling for a flag, and that should have been thrown. Brandon Burke got away with a hold on that two-point conversion. The umpire has his back to the play, trying to get out of the way, and as a result, you still got... You still got another official standing right there, and uh, it sure seems as though that somebody might have picked that up. And that's what Mac Brown is. He's not making a note to his wife or, or something <laughs> with a grocery list to go home tonight. He's writing down the time, down, distance situation, saying, guys, you blew this one. <laughs> well, and that's what coaches do. When they don't just grade their team. They grade the officials, yeah. too, and they'll send a reel to the league office and say, hey, here are the things we thought that were missed, and, you know, just making you aware of them. I'm sure that's going to be on that yeah. reel. Yeah. But I'm sorry, it don't mean much on Monday. <laughs> it sure it did. Not to Louisville. Yeah, I started to say, yeah. Coach Craigthorpe got one of those I'm sorry calls yeah. last week. Big East. Here comes the kick, going to be taken at the six-yard line by Grigsby. be knocked out of bounds at around the 36. Well, and what they're booing about is there was a illegal block in the back by Corey McEwen that was right by Grigsby, and no flag was called. Boy, what a difference in field position. If that penalty was called, it would be Nebraska's ball. Right here. Boy, the, the crowd was right. That, that should have been called. And what a difference in field position that call would have made. <laughs> These guys must be on the same plate you're on. <laughs> Trying to get out of here. Quick pass. And that is Swift. And Swift finally bumped out of bounds at around the 47-yard line. Brandon Foster got out there defensively. Now can Nebraska react to Texas getting back into the game? Momentum had been on their side for the better part of three quarters. And all of a sudden, Texas gets a nice touchdown. And can Sam Keller get his offense back on track and say, all right, guys, we're in a ball game. Now we've got to fight and scrap and try to get something out of this drive. First down. Lucky. 
puts a head down, and that is very close to an eight-yard gain. Adewego makes the tackle. Well, tonight, catch Saturday Night Football on ABC. With their sights set on the Big Ten title and a shot at the national championship, the undefeated and top-ranked Buckeyes head to Happy Valley for their biggest test of the season. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. Beanie Wells. If he is not 100%, they got a bigger mountain to climb, don't they? Keller just going to throw it into the ground. And Arakpo is hoping for a grounding, and they're going to throw it. The line judge came to discuss with the referee if Keller was outside of the tackle box and decided that he wasn't. grounded Nebraska lost it down that's a spot third down so basically it's just like a rack poke getting so that's the line right right at the horns right at the horns is what you're going to look for oh he's out oh uh, you know what wasn't beyond the line, line of scrimmage, of scrimmage. there yeah. you go right that's call by the officials absolutely good call so he was outside the box, but you've got to throw it beyond the line of scrimmage. Loss of down, so it's third down, and also from the spot. So it's third down and 15. Keller looking, looking over the middle, and could not hold on. Nate Swift with an unbelievable effort to bring it in, and I thought he was going to make his catch of the year. Couldn't grab it. Watch the effort here on the part of Nate Swift. Well, Keller was trying to throw this a little behind him because of where the coverage was, but just got a little bit too far behind him. And well, and Marcus Griffin. Yeah, Griffin. If he doesn't, if Griffin doesn't come in and knock down the arms, you're I right. think Swift makes that no, catch. No, you're right. You're exactly right. Marcus Griffin is the man who caused it, and here is the boot. Not going to turn over, but it's a good kick. Being gathered in at the 11 by Cosby. And it's going to be stopped at around the 17-yard line. So it's 47 yards in a kick and seven on the return. Let's take a timeout. 11-14 left of the ball game. Nebraska by a pair. So we are back. Texas with the football. At around the 17 yard line, they trail by a couple. A missed field goal looms large as far as the horns are concerned, but there's still just over 11 minutes to play in this football game. Charles again, and just getting a piece of him is Octavian to save a huge gainer. Let's go down to Jack. Guys, remember when we were here at the Kansas State game and the issues at the end of the game where it looked and many people thought that maybe Texas had kind of given up a little bit. Since then, Mac Brown told us that what he has preached to his team is the importance of finishing. The final 15 minutes, the fourth quarter. He, in fact, sat his team down this week and talked at length again about it. Now it's down to the final 1044. Well, one of the things that they're doing, Jack, that is uh, McCoy gets collared and caught by the face mask, and that's the reason three flags came down. Tanars, Ricky Tanars, is uh, the man who's going to be flagged on the play. Personal foul, face mask, number three, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, when you start to get the running game going, and it's the exact same play, that's an easy one to call. They've missed a couple. You can't really miss that one. But when you talk about finishing, as Jack did with Coach Brown preaching to his team about you've got to finish what you start, when you start getting the running game going to Jamal Charles, it makes it a lot easier to finish games, which they've gotten in the last couple of series. Obanaya is in the ball game right now. The ball is tipped and is intercepted by Zach Potter. And McCoy got leveled by Larry Asante. 
Asante came on a blitz that did not get picked up. Time and time again this year for Texas, it has been blitz pickup that has been the problem, and that time it was Asante who made them pay. Watch Asante, he's lined up. He just gets, he's basically lined up as a linebacker. He's not even coming from depth. He is the free man. Colt McCoy has to know that there's nobody over there. You saw what he was waiting on. He had an open receiver one-on-one -on -one right over the middle that might have gone for a touchdown. Well, the protection was set up that Larry Asante was the free man. And Colt McCoy either there was miscommunication where the line didn't know to, to, to bump out or they just didn't do it. Hit behind the line of scrimmage at Sergio Kendall. Kendall, I mentioned earlier, last year had a high ankle sprain and really never was effective. He played on special teams this year, a DUI. He was suspended for the first part of the season. And talk about coming into his own. This kid at 235 can run like the wind, and he has been good today. And a little knee injury. He was battling there for a while, so Texas glad to have him back. Lucky. And Marlon will take it inside the 40 to the 39. Well, Nebraska's last win in Austin, 1960. The Huskers against the Horns. Alan Fisher runs it in from a yard out to give the Big Red a 12 to 7 lead. On the extra point attempt, a little trickeration. Watch this. The holder spins around and then he throws it. 14 to 13, Nebraska won in 1960. Last time they beaten Texas here in Austin. Third down, Keller throwing to the end zone and incomplete, overthrown, intended for Todd Peterson. And that time, it was Dwayne Aquina and Larry McDuff, the two defensive coordinators for Texas, who decided to bring some pressure. Keller, what do you do here? You got to go field goal. You got to punt. This is a, a lengthy job. Yeah, I think you have to punt it. Uh, if they were going to kick it, yeah, they're going to punt. Yeah, right. it would have been Kanalik, but uh, I think that's even a little long for him. Yeah, it would have been an attempt of about 56 yards. Seventh time that Nebraska's had to punt today. It's Dan Titchener. Kicks it for the far sideline. A Nebraska bounce and is going to be touched dead at the two yard line by Danny Erickson. So 37 yards of the punt, but that's not the important thing. Longhorns are 98 yards away. Time now for our best buy playbook. Ed? Well, if you take a look at the interception that was caused by the pressure, watch Quan Cosby. He's going to go out like he's blocking because it's a fake screen. Watch him come free. McCoy's going to fake there, but then he's going to bring his eyes back this side, and he never sees Asante coming. Now, this is an absolute touchdown if he sees this. Watch Cosby come absolutely free, but it was because Asante came unblocked. Now the question becomes, was he supposed to be picked up and the communication wasn't made to the offensive line? Or does McCoy need to know that there's an unblocked man out there and just throw it up and see if Cosby can make a play? Well, straight ahead with a running play. He'll take it out to around the six-yard line. I'll tell you what. I'm not so sure that the receiver on the left side where he was looking when Nate he made Jones. his cut, Nate Jones might have scored had he released the ball to him. Yeah. Well, and it's it's impossible to know whether someone was supposed to bump out. It looked yeah. to me like they had they had a hat on a hat on a hat on that side with the tight end and the running back, and that was just the free man. And you do that, you block inside out. So if that was the case, then the that's on the quarterback. He's got to know someone's unblocked. Blitz coming off the corner. McCoy will keep it straight ahead and he'll have the first down. And let's go back to New York. Here's Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Ron. Georgia has widened its lead in Jacksonville on Florida once again. What a day. No Sean Marino is having his third touchdown of the day. Part of a 178 yard rushing afternoon so far. It's a 12 point lead now. Meanwhile, Michigan has won seven in a row. They're still unbeaten in the Big Ten. Retain the little brown jug. Boy, Minnesota one and eight. But a tough year. Charles back in a tailback. 
Here comes the blitz again. They hand it off to Charles. Turns the corner. Hang on. He's gone. Charles. Let's count it off. 20, 15, 10, 5, 86 yards. Jamal Charles. And they finally caught him with too many people bunched in the middle. will go for two. Tony Hills is motioning to the officials that I thought he said they wanted it on the left hash mark, but they're going to leave it right there. Right squarely in the middle of the field. McCoy's going to keep it. And didn't get it. Misses it by inches, but he did not get it. And that's Bowman who was hanging on to him, along with Asante. And McCoy is slow in getting up again. I, You know, if you're going to be doing some quarterback runs, you may want to start thinking about getting Childs in there because this young man has been taking a beating. Does everything he can. He's such a fighter, he's not going to give up. Boy, missed it by about three or four inches. Yeah. But... He's had a lot of guys landing on top of him, his head hitting the turf. You've got to wonder, Colt McCoy, who already battled a concussion before, is going to be taking too many shots in this game. Let's uh, let's take a look at this uh, touchdown run and watch. This is the value of speed. Once Charles got by the final defender, it was over. Watch the block up top. And you're absolutely right. Look at all of the white jerseys up around the line of scrimmage. And the last guy, Brandenburg, there is no safety because all of those guys were down around the line of scrimmage. Yep. And when the former Big 1200 meter champion gets that much of a lead, that's the reason I said at the 40, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, you, did, you sure did. I thought I thought there may have been an angle for the backside when you said it. it that angle was gone. No, it was yeah, gone. It, it was, was gone. wiped out immediately. Yeah. 86 yards, by the way, the longest offensive play by Texas this season. 7:33 left in the ball game. Still a lot of wiggle room for Nebraska. And Texas better not rest on their laurels because the Huskers have already proven that they came in here to play this afternoon. Here's the kick by Hunter Lawrence. Going to be returnable. Great speed. Whoa, does he get hit at the 25-yard line. And let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Ron, just want to remind everyone as we watch Anthony Morelli fire it up as he gets off the bus. Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions, like number 25, will try and topple the number one team in the nation and the BCS rankings, the Ohio State Buckeyes. That one coming up in prime time, 8 o'clock here on ABC. Ron. Okay, John. Yeah, I'll tell you that uh, the Ohio State team, everybody talks about offenses, but their defense is stout. Incomplete to pass over the middle, purify the intended receiver. And you were talking about Beanie Wells and his health. Yes. But the, the key for me, and we've seen James Laurinaitis twice this year, Anthony Morelli has a tendency in some big games to throw it to the other team. And Laurinaitis is as good as any linebacker in the country backing out and making picks. We, we saw him not with one, but two picks up in Washington against the Huskies, and both were just things of beauty. Keller deep over the middle. Got him in out there, and it is caught by Swift. Nate Swift goes high and brings it down, and that brings a hush to the crowd here at Darrell K. Royal Memorial Stadium. Well, 36 Texas, yards. Texas is so tired of seeing Swift on the post from the inside. It's the exact same route that Swift ran on both of those touchdowns. He's just going to run right by the linebacker, and the safety has to make a choice and give Keller excuse me, came from the backside. I saw the seven and thought that was Swift, but that is the exact same route 
that he ran for both of those touchdowns. Marlon Lucky straight up the middle takes it off right guard to about the 35 before Kendall makes the tackle for Texas. This is not a time to panic. They, this drive is going exactly the way you would take it out of a book. They want to run time off the clock, but also get it into the end zone and then leave Texas with very little to work with. And you feel like this is the drive of the season for Nebraska. Can they answer? of the adversity can they answer both on and off the field quick pass comes out to purify purify shoved out of bounds and that'll be enough for the first down at the 29 that's McElroy who made the play and very quietly Sam Keller is playing lights out Marlon Lucky's had some nice plays. We've seen Swift, and we talked about Swift, but here sits Keller at 20 of 29 for 262 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. He's played lights out. Yeah, he has. Aaron Lewis, number 95, comes back in at defensive line for the Longhorns. Here comes a push. Keller hit as he throws, and it, it's going to fall short of the intended receiver. And again, it is number two. And Kendall, all of a sudden, it's like the picture has gotten bigger, and he is beginning to see what's there and what he's supposed to do. And he is one of those young, fast linebackers. Marlon Lucky was assigned to block him, and Kendall is so fast that he got there quicker than Lucky expected him. Here is second down and 10. Delayed blitz. Ball is knocked loose and picked up by the Longhorns. And that is Okan. Frank Okan. And it looked to me like it was Okan who stripped it as well. Well, this is one thing the Texas defense has done all year is key takeaways. They've scored. Yes, it was. Job by Okan. Okan. It's, yeah. You're right. Stripped it and, and made the recovery. Yeah. And, and the nice part is that's such good textbook pass rush. You get your outside arm. That's the free one that you reach over. Good finish by Okan. And the ball couldn't have bounced any better for 97, could it have? Uh, that ball sometimes gets kicked around. It stayed right at his feet, and he picked it up. 6.09 left in the ball game. Imperative that Nebraska come up with a big stop just like that right there. That's Zach Potter, who got penetration, and that's loss of three, Texas, on first down. And let's go down to Jack Aru. Jack? Fellas, sometimes it's the glass is half empty or is it half full for Colt McCoy? That extended drive by Nebraska gave him what he needed. When he came off, he was winded. It took him a number of minutes before he could stop heaving his chest to where his breathing returned to normal. In fact, I shattered him the whole time, guys, and it was about a minute and a half before that turnover wow. that he was back to normal. Okay, Jack. Good hustle down there, partner. 5.30 left, and the clock is running. Well, you've got to figure that Texas is going to try to shrink this game with a running game. And I, with the, the, the report from Jack and Colt McCoy taking all these hits, I wonder if, and I know he's a freshman, but maybe get John Childs in there to run a couple of these quarterback runs and stop letting number 12 take hits. You don't know Mac Brown, do you? He doesn't like the freshman he in there. He <laughs> freshman handling the football. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just. I, and you I, know I, what, guys? I think this is an opportunity for Colt McCoy to establish himself both as the spiritual and the vocal leader. Yeah, you're they right. They see just how tough he's playing right now, and this will go a long way. Yep. Well, but but when you start talking about concussions, I start getting nervous. And he's already suffered one, and and now uh, Texas is going to take that timeout, try to burn as much time off the clock before this third and long. They let it go down to one second, which timeout. brought the game clock to 4:46. So while they take one, uh, we'll take a timeout with them. Texas 21, Nebraska 17, just under five minutes to play. 
So let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, for Nebraska, Sam Keller has had a very efficient day. Nate Swift has been killing Texas on the inside post route. And Jamal Charles has taken over for the last quarter and a half for Texas. This 86-yard touchdown round, a career long. And that's saying something for a guy with Olympic caliber speed. Got over 200 yards on the afternoon. Right now, it's Obanaya in the ball game on third down. Texas needs to take it to the Nebraska 47-yard line. And Nebraska back way off defensively. And it's a throwback to Michael Finley, the tight end. And Finley close to the first down. And I'll tell you, on the second effort, as he got spun around. Well, this spot very generous or Lance Brandenburg was under the body of Finley. Well he's shaken up. Mm -hmm. As Brandenburg spun around watch all the play action go to the right. Go to the right and Finley who faked like he fell down came back to the other side. Now watch the spot at the end of this. Does Brandenburg. Well I, I believe he did. I, it didn't look to me. Boy, and the tough thing is Brandenburg injured on the play. You could see him grabbing his uh, his arm. But I think the spot was accurate. Oh, because, because as Brandenburg spun Finley around, his body stayed below Finley. And I think they, I think they got the spot right. It looked at first to be generous. But well, when you look at this again, coming up right here. He's never touch. He's by the sticks. Actually, could have given him another half yard on that spot, but Texas not complaining. That is a huge conversion. And a good job by Finley. Faked like he fell down, came back the other way. Good finish of the run. Juan Cosby comes out of the huddle early, split to the bottom of your screen. Jamal Charles back in the game at tailback. And they hand it to him right up the middle, and he hammers his way for about five yards. And Matt Weiner, you got more on Georgia and Florida. That's right, Ron, all wrapped up in Jacksonville. It goes to Georgia. Mark Rick, never beaten by one coach three straight years, and it's not going to happen to Urban Meyer. No Sean Marino with 185 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. Bulldogs win in Jacksonville by 12. And how about your... Con Big East leaders unbeaten Connecticut in conference beat South Florida in East Hartford 22 15. Wow. Charles again bounces it outside and finally stopped at the 40 yard line. It'll be third down and three. Asante makes the tackle for Nebraska. Now. This is a huge play right here. There have been a number of them in the ball game, but the clock is down to three minutes and 41 seconds because it stopped because Nebraska called a timeout to talk it over and also to save a little time. If they hold Texas here, Texas, I believe, is out of field goal range. Let's uh, double check on Bailey. His longest, I know, is 50 plus. It's 52. And this attempt would be from about 57 yeah. yards. And I don't think you'd want to do it because of the chance of a block. Trajectory and is everything low. else. So plus and fact it's into the wind this way. Yeah. And I don't know why you'd even get fancy with this if you're Texas. By the way, good I think a good use of a timeout by Nebraska because that clock was starting to melt. Jamal Charles has been your guy. And Nebraska for the fourth time this year has now given up over 300 rushing yards because of number 25. I think you feed it to 25. So Nebraska with two timeouts left. Texas has two timeouts left. And you would like to get that field goal. You'd like to get down in that range to put it beyond a touchdown. You see the Huskers lining up at the line of scrimmage and now the middle linebacker another one they come off the corner Ryan play and here goes Charles 15 10 5 touchdown 40 yards Everybody ganged up at the line of scrimmage, and all you need is a breath as far as the amount of blocking that has to happen. 
164 yards. Bailey has the extra point, and now with three minutes and 34 seconds showing on the clock, let's take one more look at the touchdown. 28 to 17 Longhorns. Uh, Bill Callahan's defense just got worn out. They played great for about three quarters. And you mentioned there is no safety back. If we freeze it right here, once you're free, if, you, if you've committed everyone here, there's nobody home, and then you're going to get that block up top. And it's just, a, it's Olympic caliber speed. I, you just, I don't fault Nebraska for what they were trying no, to do. No, That's what no. kept them in this game. Yeah, I, I couldn't and, agree and more. They came in. It looked like they were on the path for a giant upset 21 point underdog so they were going to stick with the defense that they had been running all day but I think they just got worn out at the point of attack at the end. Well it, it, again they had they had had so much success by doing that and they had a lot of folks at the line of scrimmage but it, again it was about the only thing that they could do and Absolutely. I you know for anybody who would uh, get upset with Nebraska for going about it the way they did I, I, th I think you're wrong uh, I think they came in with a good plan I think that Texas is just a better team than them physically they came in with a very good plan and uh, they stuck with it but unfortunately Texas has guys like Jamal Charles and uh, Jamar J uh, Jermichael Finley guys who can make big plays when you need them well they kicked this one on the ground up and return to the 40 yard line is Mike McNeil. Well, Nebraska's last four game losing streak, in fact, they have not experienced a four game losing streak since a loss to Kansas back in 1961. Loss to the Jayhawks capped a four game skid that also included losses to Syracuse, Oklahoma State, and Missouri. You know, it's funny watching that footage from. Back in the 60s, if you watched Boise State, Fresno State last night, same. Boise State ran that exact same play for a touchdown. I mean, identical. That's to Lucky. And Marlon Lucky will have the first down. It's going to be a gain of about 11 on the play. Biggest thing right now is to keep an eye on the clock. So if you are Nebraska, you are down 11. So there's a field goal in here. Don't waste too much time on this drive. If you start to run in mud at about the 25 or 30, kick it. Then go for your onside kick. Don't waste too much time on this drive. Well, the pass thrown, a little drag route right over the middle. Uh, Bobino makes the stop on Lucky. And Sam Keller all year has been very good in their two-minute drill. He's been up around 80% completion. A lot of people in Nebraska thinking maybe they should just stay in this offense. But Keller's been very efficient when they get into this situation. And he's had a good day. Wide open, guess who? Swift. I tell you, he is really going to be bothered when he gets on a plane because someone's going to be sitting next to him. That's as close as anybody's been to him today. <laughs> I'm telling you, because nobody in a burnt orange jersey has been close to him, I can tell you that. Jamal Charles, first three quarters, 74 yards, and look, in the fourth quarter, nine attempts, 190 yards. Going for the end zone, got a man there, and he overthrew Purified. You know, the, those numbers on Charles, there are a lot of people from down in his part of the world that have complained, been very vocal, that in high school he carried the ball 30 and 35 times, and the last 10 times is when he killed it. Now, the fumbles that he has had this year is one of the reasons he has not been given the ball that much, but he certainly backs up their theory here today. And if you're Nebraska, I think you take one or two more shots into the end zone here. Don't mess around with the clock and then maybe look for maybe look for the field goal. Boy, Keller is down. It was Eddie Jones coming with some pressure. We may see Joe Gantz here, at least for a play, as a Keller just unable to get up. While we have a second here, let's uh, check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Well, Ron
Juan, if you had any question as to whether or not the 110,000 people in Happy Valley who are ready for the number one team in the nation, take a look at the white out there. That one is coming up at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Number one and number 25 run. John, let me tell you something. I was fortunate enough to do that game two years ago when they had a white out, and that night, People ask you all the time, what's the noisiest stadium you go to? That night, that was the most noise I'd ever heard at a college football game. I mean, it was deafening. And that's the last time Ohio State has lost in the regular season was 2005. It's been a really great run for Jim Tressel and his Buckeyes, and a lot of people in the country wondering, is Ohio State worthy of number one? Now, we've had the fortune of seeing them play twice. I think they are. I think that Todd Beckman has developed as a quarterback Robisky at receiver is an excellent big play guy, but I agree with you. I think a lot of it rests on the inflamed foot of Beanie Wells and yeah. how healthy he is down the stretch. So Keller going to go off the field under his own power. This is Joe Gantz. He's a junior out of uh, Petals Heights, Illinois. And Gantz is the more athletic of the two, so I would think maybe they'll try some kind of rollout. To get him away from and pressure. He knows the offense very yes, well. It's does. his fourth year there. From the shotgun, Gantz steps up, goes for the end zone, had a man there, and he led him just a little too much. That's France Hardy, the man he was looking for. You know, the thing we talked about Ohio State last week, and for lack of a better term, you know, I think if they keep those running backs healthy, if they play ugly, if they play defense and run the football, they're capable of doing it. And I, I can't figure out why Nebraska is not kicking a field goal here. You're down 11 points. You need a touchdown, two point conversion to field goal. I, I, you've got to kick it here. Two minutes and 32 seconds left in the ball game. Gantz, far sideline, got his man, and Purified will have the first down. 12 yards in the play. That silences the crowd. It's obvious they want to get the big number first. Purify, the guy who had some off the field issues, was suspended earlier in the season. He's a big, rangy guy with good speed. He just got good burst, and Ryan Palmer was late on his break. Texas called a timeout, I believe, just before the ball was snapped. Timeout, Texas. Well, let's go back to strategy here. If you're Nebraska, again, you don't want to waste too much time worrying about the touchdown. You're still thinking about a field goal, touchdown, two-point conversion. The good news for Texas, I always look at 11 points as really three scores because two-point conversions to me are like having to score again. So a good position for Texas to be in with 227 left and Nebraska down to two timeouts. That's a good look at uh, Sam Keller on the sidelines and uh, he is in considerable pain. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And a real shame senior came in here played lights out. I don't think that Nebraska could have expected the quarterback to play any better today. And it's a shame he may not get to finish it. Well, there was movement. It's going to cost him five yards. New quarterback. Right new cadence. Full start. 72 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. And it's Javario Burks, who's a true freshman in there because Lydon Murtha who's the usual tackle in that spot, has a broken toe. Well, I, I, <laughs> well it didn't look like Burke's move to me. I, there, there was some movement, but you know, I think they called the wrong number. Yeah, I think you're right. Gantz yeah, going to run it. 15 at the 10, and instead of going out of bounds, went on downfield, took it all the way to the 5. Foster finally was there defensively. Gans should have fought to get out of bounds there. Clock runs 210, now 29. They're really having to hustle as they get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down, fade route, far corner, caught by Nebraska, touchdown, purified. 
now you've got to score like I said it's like scoring twice you've got to get the two point conversion now remember Gans is an athletic quarterback excellent throw you've got the height advantage over that side purify working against a 5 9 quarter in Foster but now with a athletic quarterback of your Texas you think maybe some type of option with Gans or a rollout to one side you may want to bring blitz to the side of the three receivers because I would get Gans on the moves with his athleticism 155 to play they need this two point conversion. Straight in the pocket, right over the middle of Ben, wide open for the two point conversion. Guess who? Swift. Three point ball game. Texas 28 to 25 with 155 showing on the clock. Now, in timeouts, you can tell by the dots underneath. Nebraska still has two, and Texas has one. And you're going to see an onside kick now by Nebraska. And. They are 0 for 1 this season on onside kicks, but the way football, both pro and college, has been going lately, we saw it the other night with Virginia Tech and Boston College. If I were Mac Brown, I'd be a little nervous because it seems there's something in the zeitgeist about onside kicks that a lot of people are recovering them. I always think the technique is so important. You know, you don't, I don't think you want to dribble it. I think you want to drive it in the ground, get it up in the air, and hope that it gets batted around so that you have a chance to do it. Don't expect it on the second or third time it's going to catch an edge and jump in the air. I think you want to try to drive it into the ground and get it up in the air immediately. Also, last weekend, it looks like uh, Henry is going to be the man who will kick it off. Who was it that hit a drive kick uh, looking for an onside kick and it bounced off one of the receiving team and that's the way they made to recover. Well, that was similar to what happened in Virginia Tech Boston College the other night. The receivers came over the 10 yard to try to catch it came off the shoulder pads and Boston College was able to recover it. Henry there's the high bouncer and it is caught by. <laughs> He caught it and then he dropped it and then he grabbed it. Brandon Foster. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's something in the air. I've got it, I've got it. I don't have it. Yeah, you could see yeah. the Nebraska player reacted when all of a sudden he looked up and said, he's lost the football. Take another look. Never put it away. And that was uh, Marlon Lucky, the running back in there who was speeding towards the ball. Titan snap, full start, 19 of the offense, five yard penalty, first down. Blaine Irby, who was uh, a freshman, number 19. That's only two penalties against the Longhorns today. And because of these two timeouts, if Texas does not pick up a first down, they'll have to punt. You can only run, give or take 15 seconds, about a minute off the clock when the opposition has two timeouts. Charles goes down quickly this time. And a timeout called by Nebraska. So huge fourth quarter for Jamal Charles. Well, we were talking the entire game about the fact that Nebraska completely sold out. They put everybody up around the line of scrimmage. Seven, eight, nine men in the box, depending on the offensive set that Texas was in. And it was working. It worked for three quarters. Charles had about 70 yards in the first three quarters, but as the defensive line for Nebraska got a little more tired and Charles got a little more ahead of steam, he was breaking through that second and third level and nobody was home. And of course, the great speed of Charles, 190 yards in the fourth quarter. Unbelievable. That's incredible. The 265 total 
Uh, that's the sixth best in Longhorn history and the most since 283 by Cedric Benson who now plays for the Chicago Bears and that was against uh, Texas A&M by Benson. And you know they're totally different kind of runners because Cedric you know very good power runner but nowhere near the speed this kid has but bigger also. Is it back out to this side and Charles is going to take it inside the 30 stay on the field to play rather than going out of bounds and picks up the first down. How about that John Saunders. Quite a quarter for Jamal Charles and Anthony Morelli hoping to have a similar type of success against the number one team in the nation Penn State and Ohio State coming up at the top of the hour eight o'clock here on ABC Ron. Thank you John. Well and now with one timeout Texas should be able to run the clock out because they come into this set of downs with the clock already running they'll get almost 25 seconds taken off before they have to snap it here. Game clock goes under 115 and here's Charles bounces it outside and again works very hard at keeping the ball in bounds and he does at the 20. Philip Dillard makes the stop for the Cornhuskers. Well, here's a little trivia. The NCAA record for one quarter rushing. Corey Dillon from the University of Washington. So Jamal Charles getting awfully close to the NCAA record. Well, a thousand yards of the season for him now. He is at 290 rushing on the day. That's now the fourth best. Well, I think his day may be done because if you're Texas, you can't run the clock out. So you may start taking a knee. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Sam Keller quarterback for Nebraska and Jamal Charles running back for Texas in recognition of their efforts Chevrolet will make a one thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. I, I hope the effort of Nebraska is not lost. Oh, you know there are so many things going on in and around this program and we all get caught up in talking about guys and if they're going to lose their job and everything and we sometimes we forget guys like Sam Keller and purify and, and individuals like that that came out and fought hard. I hope this team gets some recognition for a well fought game here in Austin. You know Zach Potter also Brandenburg defensively Potter for, uh, played great. Yeah he really did. Snap, full start, 55 offense, five yard penalty, second down. Cedric Dockery. <laughs> That's a heck of a way to get my <laughs> name announced to this crowd here. His uh, older brother is already in the NFL, a really fine offensive lineman who graduated from the University of Texas just a short time ago. Well, his day was done until that false start by Mr. Dockery, so Jamal should go thank him that. He's got to come back out, out. Although Texas could just simply run out the clock if they chose to do so. Clock is at uh, 107. And Charles going to be stopped after a gain of one. Big day as far as Mac Brown is concerned. If he holds on to win this one, but it, it's appearing that that will happen. His 100th win with the victory here this afternoon. Wasn't even brought up. Didn't even want to talk about it. And Jamal Charles with 217 yards in the fourth quarter may fall just short of the NCAA record of Corey Dillon at 222 yards. The yards, rushing yards in one quarter. Charles has come to the bench though and will not get an opportunity to break it. This is Obanaya. And uh, Chris is going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. They don't have to run another play. This one's going to go in the book. And people will look at it and say, well, Texas won, and that's four straight losses for Nebraska. Tell you what, folks, these kids from Lincoln, they fought 
right there. Absolutely. Out. And I, I guarantee you, Matt Brown is going to go up to Bill Callahan and congratulate him for a great effort that he brought his team in and showed the people from Austin that this team can play. Our final score, Texas 28 and Nebraska 25. Be sure to join us tonight on ABC for Saturday Night Football. Top ranked Ohio State against Penn State, 8 o'clock Eastern. For Ed Cunningham and Jack Ruth, I'm Ron Franklin saying so long from Austin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.